a regularly scheduled program already in progress. Costa fires. And Harris to the one-yard line. First and goal, Miami. And they're making it look easy here on their opening series. See what they did that time as they moved Jonathan Harris. They like to play tight coverage down here. He will move in motion. Now this prints, prevents the defensive back. See him coming from the left. Now the corner, actually it's the safety 25 Lions, cannot press him as physical when he moves like that. Now he works inside. He beats him in that little inside move. First down, goal to go. Here they like to line up in a, in a three back attack or a wing back attack and want to run to the left. Up behind big Ricky Perry, number 73. Derek Harris is in at fullback number 34. Oh. And he is smashed. What a nice play. Great play by Malloy, who came breaking through, setting back to the six-yard line. There's the free safety coming and whacking the fullback. <laughs> I'll tell you, he was on top of it. What he folks for a three-yard loss. And the Huskies are saying, not quite as easy as you might have imagined down here. Well, we saw him do this coming from the safety position a number of times against Ohio State to come up and stuff the run. Here it's goal line. He does not have to line up very deep, and he can attack. Tough to pick up that guy in that center guard gap, especially when he gets there in a surprise. Now, Washington's personality is to play man-to-man -man defense, but you would guess that with all this speed, they've got to be thinking about some zones. We see more zone coverage down here with teams going in. He used a safety valve through behind Stewart. They don't bring that fellow down to the first hit, do they? James Stewart is big, 6'3", 225, and not only big, he was second in the state of Florida in the 100 meters running 10-4. When you throw it out to this guy, you've got to bend your knees. Look at the beautiful hands there. You've got to bend your knees and strike. Get your arms wrapped around him. See, he didn't get his arms wrapped. He'll run through those kind of tackles. Too big, too strong, too fast. What do you like on third and goal, Dick? Well, I'll tell you, they, they could very well go to their two-point play down here, Brent. They, they'll get in a double slot. Now they're checking it right there. They get in, if they get in a double slot, they'll try to work to the wide side of the field from talking to Rich Olson, the offensive coordinator, quarterback coach. He calls all the plays from the press box. Dennis Erickson's team attempting to score with the ball. You can see just rusting inside the three-yard line. So it'll be third and goal for the Canes. Now it's fourth and goal. Decision time for Miami. This is a wonderful goal line stand so far for the Huskies, and it did not take Erickson long. He sent field goal specialist Mike Chrissy trotting onto the field. He does not want to come away empty-handed on their first drive. It was Lawyer Malloy who set it up with that blitz, tackling the fullback for a loss. And that encouraged the rest of the defense for Jim Lambright to make what is a good stand. Lunday Pruitt, Dane Pruitt, if he ever is going to miss one, he misses more in close, believe it or not, than he does to distance. 20-yard field goal. Chrissy puts the Canes up. It's officially a 19-yarder. We won't quibble. On October 12, 1985, the University of Miami defeated Cincinnati 38 to zip. People didn't realize that it'd be 58, nine more games that they'd be looking for over the span of eight years, 11 months, two weeks. That includes those two leap years, Brent. And look at that, 282,441,000 seconds. There's a few more seconds since then, but I flunked math. We started this thing about 10 minutes ago. Yeah, I noticed on the bottom of that <laughs> graphic for Jack, we had give or take a few, didn't we, folks? Well, one of the things that has to encourage Washington is even though they gave up a lot of completions to Costa is the fact that Miami had a first and goal at the two and then settled for the 19-yard field goal. But now, can the Huskies generate offense. We're going to find out. Sheehy. 20 and no further. Great speed. C.J. Richardson, number 19, was leading the charge. He loves playing on special teams. Even though he has been here for several seasons, he would not give up his spot on those kickoff units, and he does it again. 
Now, folks, consider just how important it was holding Miami to three and not seven. They have not lost a game. They've led by seven or more in the last 112 games. They're sitting on a three spot right now. That dates back to 1984 against Maryland in what was one of the wildest games that the Canes have ever been involved in. Now, Heward brings it up. He will see if he can get some offense going with Washington's second series. The motion man, Janoski. You see how tight they're playing Bjornsson at the bottom of the screen. So it'll be Kaufman trying to find daylight. And he's ambushed. Dick, they have got to find something on the outside to loosen things up. Yeah, well, they were trying to bounce outside with the counter play. You know, freeze those inside linebackers, then slide along and find a place to run over the strong side outside on the right, Brent, but it was tough. See, they got whipped on the line of scrimmage. Now, Holmes, number 90, gets good penetration, see? And he, he bottles it up, and that frees it for the linebacker, Burgess, to get in to make the play. Then he draws the rest of the orange jerseys. Kaufman with a one-yard loss on that play. So he's even for the day, and it's tough going right now for him. There's a crease. There it is. Napoleon stops through to the 26-yard line. See, that time they got the defensive front reduced. They took the back out of the backfield, fullback, and lined up as a flanker. That took one of the linebackers out of there, and they ran right at it, running at six guys rather than seven. Easier to run. Dick, what about Kaufman cutting on grass here in the Orange Bowl rather than artificial turf like back at Husky Stadium? I asked him about it yesterday. He said he would rather cut back naturally on Astor turf, but he felt this was a good, solid turf, and it shouldn't be an excuse. Wide receivers out to the left. The Here defensive backs all over him at the top of your screen. So they used the tight end, Bruner, and you could hear Lewis coming over there. He was right with Tuan Russell, and they bring the tight end down. See, they line up with a two-back attack. Miami's thinking 4-3 defense. They take the back and take him out of the backfield. They've got the secondary kicked away from it. Now they have to put a linebacker out on that running back loosens it up inside. First and ten after that reception by Brunner. Now the Huskies go to the fullback. Richard Thomas is coming in front after of Kaufman, him. and Miami may have been offside. Let's see what happens down the middle. Incomplete and high on the blitz. See, Sapp was right there in his face. You know, uh, it's important to sack a quarterback. But sometimes a bigger play is a result. Let's see what the penalty is here. Offsides. Offsides. Defense. Still first down. What I was saying, though, the pressure creates the poor throw, which is more susceptible to the interception. El Sapp was right in his face. Tough to set up and throw accurately. Well, the Huskies here doing a few of the little things. Huh? First down pass to the tight end. They draw the defense offside. They like After the penalty, it's first and five. Holy now they bring Kaufman and Kaufman tripped up and there was great penetration by Warren Sapp. The All-American defensive tackle that time gave you an indication as to why folks are so high on him. Let me tell you, if an NFL team decides to draft him and he stays healthy, you got a player for 10 years, folks. He's that athletic. You got to watch him with a basketball in his hands, his speed. He can run you down from behind. Got a wonderful personality. He was actually a tight end here in 1992 when they found out he was a better defensive football player. But on that play, he absolutely destroyed the offensive guard. Well, let's see what happens here on second and four. There's the flea flicker. Hewitt steps away from pressure. Janoski can't get a grab on it. They're going for the big one. Bill Driedrich comes up with a good call on second and four, hands it off in tight like they like to run. They flip it back, trying to get the safeties out of the heart of the defense down there. But again, it's Riley, the other defensive tackle. They doubled up. Now watch this right here. They double up right there. See, but it's Riley, 43, that here he comes to the right side of your screen. See, they don't get him. You can't double them both. He creates the pressure. The ball's still down the hole. A lot of orange jerseys show up by then. Third and four.
job. Nice Luner job. Hangs on for a first down. Let's go to John Saunders, John. Brent, as you know, Colorado's already beaten up on a Big Ten school in Wisconsin today. They have Michigan and the Wolverines on the road, and they score first. Rashawn Salam from two yards out, pulls his way in, and Colorado has a 7-0 lead. Back to you, Brent. Yeah, John, that's a uh, big-time team. I was shocked to see that they were a five-point underdog coming into Ann Arbor this afternoon. That team has got speed on the boundaries, more speed than Notre Dame. Michigan with its hands full in that one, but there's a long way to go. And here we got a long way to go with Miami up by a field goal, 3 nothing, and kind of a sloppy football game here in the, uh, in the early going. You know, we've talked about Warren Sapp. We've talked about Napoleon Kaufman. Let's bring Warren in, because I said to, I said, Warren, rate Napoleon Kaufman for me. How good a running back Illegal is Illegal contact it? on the defense, still first down. You know, I'm not here to rate him, I'm here to tackle him. Really doesn't bother me, you know, how good he is. I mean, he, he puts his pants on just like I do, one leg at a time, so he can be stopped. So <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't worry about how good he is. What a great statement. <laughs> I'm not here to rate him, I'm here to tackle him. Folks, that's Mr. Defense down there. Now it is first and five. Good play fake up high and incomplete. See, they were in the two tight end offense that time they used the play action to freeze the inside linebacker keep Ray Lewis from dropping back and then he takes a choice between either tight end going down in the seam. so Pearson number 38 good coverage and I think that every time you watch the picture and the Husky fans have to be a little uneasy right now the great speed the number of orange jerseys you see when there's a Husky trying to break off downfield this Miami team may be one of the most underrated teams in the nation right now. I don't think folks are giving them the kind of respect they deserve because of what happened against Arizona out there in the bowl game. They bobble at the backfield and he's down. Kaufman is down and he'll take a loss back to the 40 yard line that time. Toss the ball. Normally when the ball is fumbled by the running back, he becomes a runner before he, in this case though, it wasn't the running back's ball. The ball hit the fullback's hip. Fullback Richard Thomas hit him in the hip. That normally is the quarterback's ball. Jim Landright came in here with confidence that they could play with these guys. And I think it's important to come in here that way. Gives your kids a positive attitude. 10-yard loss makes it third and 15 for Heward. Incomplete. And Heward is not into that rhythm yet, is he? No, Brent. And the other thing, what pressure creates is all of a sudden you get the time to throw well, you hurry it when you don't have to. And I think that was the case that time. He's going to have to get a little better feel for when there's pressure and there is no pressure. Dickey's completed two of seven for 14 yards. As I recall, both were the two tight ends. So they have not yet got a wide receiver into the game as German goes back deep. I would expect to see pretty soon Fred Coleman, the freshman wide out for Washington before we get too far along in this game. That's a nice punt. That's a nice one. Hard to return that. Jeff Prince drives German back inside the 10 yard line. And here comes a little of that hurricane speed. There's a penalty flag down. Could be a clip. German back to the 19 yard line. Miami in their first two ball games on have only allowed 57 yards a game passing Brent, so they've got to come up with some other things to complete the ball downfield maybe it is a substituted wide receiver that they haven't seen holding take it back gives us an opportunity to take a break here Hurricane heaven. They're up by a field goal. CFA College Football on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Chevrolet. The cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day. Genuine Chevrolet. Budweiser. Beachwood age for a crisp, clean, classic taste. The 25th anniversary diamond necklace for a brilliant celebration of your loving marriage. And UPS, the package delivery company, more companies count on. 
Welcome to the Orange Bowl of Miami with Jack Aroot and Dick Vermeil. I'm Brad Musburger. The Canes with 58 straight victories here lead by a field goal. And while we were away, that young man, Tremaine Mack, was over there practicing the long snaps. That may be the only weakness with his team. Stewart, the lone running back. The Huskies get down and ready now to see if they can shut him down here and bury him and make him punt. Get some field position. Great defense that time. Chambers, who's had a heck of a year, and Donovan Schmidt, number 52, who comes back into the starting lineup, gets it done. John Saunders, how's Air McNair taxiing today? Well, Brandy's off and running or off and flying, if you will, early on here against Sam Houston State. McNair goes to Kobe Jenkins, nine yards. It tied the game at seven apiece. Sam Houston has scored again. They're up 14-7. Brandon. So we'll get to watch McNair come from behind with those highlights. ABC TV with regional coverage of a young man from a small school who is certainly getting a lot of attention and deserves everyone's consideration. Here is Frank Costa, the senior quarterback from Philadelphia, now with a second and 14 after the four-yard loss. The Huskies. Pressing with seven up on the line. Stewart swinging to the left. Reeser meets him right there. Now, we talked about the Heisman, and I want you to pay attention to this one. There's Terry Dean. Florida's off. He's thrown for 775 yards. Napoleon, as you know, out in Seattle. He's rushed for 363. Take a look at Steve McNair. He has passed for almost twice as many yards as Dean, and he's rushed for as many as Napoleon coming into today's action. And you would have to think that McNair even leads Napoleon right now. He's got his hands full with this Miami defense down here. Third and six. Husky defense looks good right now, Dick. Yes, they're doing a good job. They did. They went to a zone that last time. It looks like they're going to play zone again here. Here comes Reeser, blindside corner blitz, and it's three and out. Great defensive series by the Huskies. What they did is they showed a zone coverage and a corner rolled up like a double zone, and they blitzed him off the short side of the field and backed him up with a man coverage. Tough, tough to read that. You'll see him see rolled up as a zone corner would be for Reggie Reeser coming there. You don't expect it. Blind side of the quarterback, he can't see it. He's quick enough to get there and complete pass. Well, now number 24, Termaine Mack, with a little heat on, but he was over practicing one time after another, does not want to sail this one as high as he did against Arizona State. He started practicing on first down. Mike Chrissy ready, and he nailed it. No penalty flags down. Kaufman at midfield with the fair catch. So the Huskies have got some field position. They have to be encouraged with how their defense played on that last series. We'll be right back. Well, there's uh, our regional lineup on ABC next week. See a game you like and maybe not coming into your area? Call your cable operators, as my friend Keith Jackson says. They'll take your money. <laughs> UCLA coming into Seattle. <laughs> He's something. Okay. Now, midfield. Good, good field position here for the Huskies. Dick, uh, they have just got to get something going on the outside with the wide receivers. Well, B. Dick, Bill Diedrich, the offensive coordinator, on these first down, wants to change up and, and go ahead and throw the ball from the drop back game. Here he's going to come a little play action pass. He's got a man deep. Didn't see him. He looked like he was just thinking run all the way and got back for the original line of scrimmage. Let's go to John Saunders for an update. John, what do you got? Well, Brent, Stanford's defense in trouble already. Down 7-0 to Arizona. And Dan White hooks up with Richard Dice. 14 yards, 14-0. Antoine Carter has the other touchdown. That's the score right now in the first quarter, Brent. Yeah, I don't think Coach Walsh will be shut out, but he might give up 30 or 40 today. All right, 3-0 here. Miami with the lead. Second and nine. One-yard gain on the Heward run. Here goes the back out of the backfield. Reduces the defense inside. Now they're running against six people. A little bit easier. Kaufman daylight. Oh, did he get hit after a seven-yard gain and scrambling to the ground. Rohan Marley, you know the story about him. Now you'll see that they take the fullback and move him out of the backfield. Initially, there's seven guys in there to defensive run. They took the fullback out. They're minus this linebacker here. Now one less person to block, a little bit more room. They use step around blocking. Tessie number 54 came around, and now they just give the ball to a good running back. They're going to have to use a little more of that approach. Needing 65 yards to become their all-time leading rusher. He'd pass a good one. This is Kaufman. 
They tried a quick trap in there, and they weren't quite quick enough. And the defense is just shaking their head, saying, no, you didn't make it. I think you might as well go for it. No? No, it's not as... It's a little longer than I thought, Brand. I take that back. You're entitled. Yeah. Coach can change his mind. There's still time. And Jeff Prince trots on out there. German standing back on the Canes 10-yard line. Their fullback is a quarterback. He can throw the ball if they want to run a fake. Boy, you were just determined to do something other than what they did. Well, I think for them to do something offensively, they're going to have to do some unexpected things. So you'd go ahead even in the first half, Dick, and admit that you're not as good physically no. and uh, you don't match up? No, I just think you've got to go ahead and do some things out of the usual. You know, they got a 58-game win streak for one reason or another. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're brutal down here, man. I've been in in a few of their bloodlettings down here, folks. You can ask Notre Dame. Oh. They play you tough in the old Orange Bowl, they will. Is that why some people here said, to, are you working with Mr. Notre Dame when I got in town here? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got to kneel you a little bit about that. I was hit, about three or four different people gave me that shot. I don't even attend mass on a Sunday. I don't understand it. Man. I <laughs> don't understand it. Larry Jones. They're stacked up inside. Tough to run against that, but it bounced outside. Short side, first down, lost the ball after he was out of bounds. See, they wanted to go up inside. It was crowded, but they kept the line of scrimmage clean. No penetration, and he could slide along the line of scrimmage. You'll see what I'm talking about. The offensive right side of the line really comes off nicely here and keeps it soft so he can go whoop, right to the outside. See, they did a nice job there. Now really a good soft corner. Hard to, to get in the running back's face when it's blocked like that. You know what's interesting is Larry Jones has replaced Stewart is the fact that they've got such great depth. And Jones comes in with a 13-yard gain. And down here in the heat and humidity of the Orange Bowl, sauna bath-like atmosphere, now they go back to work. And they pick up Gerard Daphnis, the tight end. And he has been a pleasant surprise for the coaching staff here in Miami. Of all the people on this roster, they say he is the most improved and the guy they really didn't anticipate a lot from. And he's given him a great effort, training camp and spring practice. And he's made a player. Here he is locked in over there. They use the motion to loosen up the defense and they bring him in a crossing pattern. Good pass protection. Good pack. They should whop him right there and not let him cross cleanly like that. See, you should take him on and not let him cross cleanly. Got into a foot race with Kilpatrick and he won it and Jones comes back to that short side, gets around Chambers before Malloy can push him out of bounds. And the Canes are finding some business over there on the short side, Mr. Vermeil. Yeah, I know it. You know, even when you do things correctly, the quarterback takes a shot once in a while. Take a look at this last play. Number 11, Costa got it, throws the ball and wham, down he goes. Mr. Hoffman gives him a little touch. Steve Hoffman is becoming a better football player. The coaches tell me he's learning to play lower. He's a big, tall guy at six foot six, and, but he plays aggressive and he's learning to bend his knees. His brother was a fine linebacker at Washington years past. You tell Green, the talented freshman, number 87, checks in as one of the wideouts. He's come just off your screen down toward the bottom. Costa. And he's looking for the speed right now. Almost hooked up with the freshman. Let's take a look at him now in isolation. You're looking at a future superstar, or so they say down here. Well, here's a kid that, you know, he had nine touchdowns his senior year in high school. He, he's always been able to get to the end zone. He has good speed, tough, no safety help. You see, he has a step. If that ball's thrown properly, it's thrown at the right angle. Just a little too strong, just a little too much in it. He wasn't out running any fire hydrant either. Reeser no, hey, Reeser can play. And he went right by him with that 4-2-3. And now it is third and one. Larry Jones, the running back. There is another one of the Jones. That's Chris T on the outside, number 85. First down, Miami. Nice job. 
there by Derek Harris, the H-back, a converted fullback. He did a nice job of blocking the outside linebacker and giving him that little crease as they made him slide along the line of scrimmage. You gotta compliment Derek Harris on that play. Dick, low scoring first quarter, that surprise you or not? No, it really didn't. I think these team, two teams are gonna battle, battle even. What you've gotta watch for, I think it's from Seattle's standpoint, the Huskies, if the heat wears them out just a little bit more in the second half. That would be my concern. Though it's been warm in Seattle. Warm in Seattle ain't like warm in Miami. They're loaded up strong side coverage, Brent. Throw it weak side, they got a play. Steps up, escapes the pressure. They got it. And despite the flag interference on Reeser, he got it anyway, didn't he? I could see that coming, Brent. Very, very good read by Frank Costa. He looked up there. He had three receivers to the top of the field. They moved the coverage there. He had an isolation one-on-one -on -one corner on defensive back, and he took what they gave him. Did a real nice job. All coverage moved to the left side of your screen. Single coverage to the right side. He gets back, a little play action fake. Helps hold the linebackers. He steps up inside that pressure, does not panic. Throws the strike, bottom side of your screen. Nice catch by Chris Jones. That's T. Jones. We also have a Chris C. Jones. <laughs> So a reminder that at the conclusion of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. And for the 24th year through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of both Miami and Washington. Fellas over there trying to cool off, huh, Jack Aroot? Well, Brent, indeed they are. You know, you said the heat and humidity isn't as high in Seattle. Well, indeed. But what the team has done, the Huskies have imported these cool zone fans that mix water with the air. What it happens to do is it tries to absorb the humidity in the water droplets. It works pretty good, in fact. Well, with three wide receivers, they'll hand off instead. And uh, look, oh, give my me God. a break. Give me a break there. Hey, guys, it really does work. <laughs> That's I'm the having end a better the time than you. Quarter. We just dock his pay one quarter, folks, for that. End of the first quarter. Miami three, Washington nothing. We'll be right back. <laughs> the skyline of Miami at a football game that everyone wanted back in 1991 when Washington and Miami shared the national championship. Remember how the USA Today, the coaches voted Washington number one and the Associated Press, the writers, voted Miami number one. So they traveled together to the White House and now for the first time in the history of these two schools they are meeting on the gridiron James Stewart back in at running back second and ten from the 22 Costa tries to set the screen and he'll throw it out of bounds very well defended Hoffman had come over to that other side Dick here are the numbers Kaufman held the 15 yards rushing six carries first quarter well as you look at this you see Washington rushing yards total six yards that's the, not their style of football time to possession pretty even they're really being dominated offensively by University of Miami no turnovers yet well now it's a third and ten and uh, German has checked in at wide receiver Trent Jones is there and Yatil Green the freshman they are determined to get 97 involved in this offense and wouldn't you if you had someone who could run and catch like he can Costa's going to drop it off. They tried to set it to Green, and they get it into his hands and kill Patrick there defensively for the Huskies. Two weeks ago against the University of Arizona State, they ran that similar play to Jamie German. He went for a touchdown twice on that same play. Defense this week. Now, Miami has a gimmick play off that. They're going to show that, fake the screen, and go deep. Look for that the next time they show that formation and action. So Dane Pruitt, this would put Miami up by a pair of field goals. He's 10 for 15 in his career from this distance. The 38-yarder hooks over. 7, 1985, Jimmy Johnson leads the Hurricanes in all orange into the Orange Bowl as they play cross-state rival the University of Florida. Now, they're in all orange. Kerwin Bell 
was the quarterback and Galen Hall was the coach for Florida. And Johnson lost 35 to 23. But Brent, as they say, the rest of the story was it was the team that convinced Jimmy Johnson to outfit themselves in all orange. After the game, they said they looked like giant pumpkins. Said never, never all orange again. Gators said trick or treat after that one was over, <laughs> but that was the last time Miami has lost. An NCAA record 58 game home winning streak. They have beaten up on teams from all across the United States. We'll show you that graphic later in the day. Al Pruitt, who's hit a couple of field goals with the kickoff fielded by Mike Reed, number 36, and Reed brings it out to the 34-yard line for the Huskies. And Damon Heward, Heward unable to get any kind of a passing game going yet for Washington. You know what they might start doing is trying to get the ball to Kaufman out of the backfield as a receiver. Get him on that linebacker because I really think the edge from a wide receiver standpoint against Miami secondary goes to the secondary. They can run with those guys. Ernie Conwell, one of the tight ends, has caught a ball. So, too, has Mark Bruner. Kaufman and number 52, Ray Lewis, one of the better middle linebackers, just came and swallowed him. See, he's quick enough. He can run through. You don't want to run through unless you can make the play. Here he is right here. Now, see, he's going to scrape off and make the play. You've got to be careful. If you get picked up there, you're in trouble. But he doesn't get picked up. He makes the play. Very quick, sophomore linebacker, excellent athlete. Average team speed of that defense is 4-6-4. Brent, that is faster than my Super Bowl team. Faster than your Faster Super than my Bowl Super Bowl team was. Yes. Phenomenal. Two-yard loss, second and 12. No wonder they haven't given up a score. No wonder we lost the game. <laughs> <laughs> Heward incomplete and being bobbled by Earl Little, a free safety. Earl Little is a backup to C.J. Richardson. He goes in there. He's done a good job. You know, he originally went to University of Michigan, worked his way up to the second squad and left. Came here. Here he is playing. He's got three years of eligibility. It's 6 nothing. Two Miami field goals. The main storyline here so far is the performance of Warren Sapp and the Hurricane defensive unit. They are dominating the game. Watch the two fellas on the inside defensively. They work a trick. Riley came free, but there's the completion of Kaufman. There's what you wanted, Dick. Little came in a little bit late on that after Chad Wilson made the stop, but they are still far short of a first down. Yeah, on third and 11, throwing a flat pass to the back is not a great way to get your first down. You've got to get it to him going upfield so he can juke a guy, go get his pads heading toward that other end zone and run at those safeties. We have a man down. Dick, it's amazing. When I came to town, you'd already been over there, watched a half dozen reels of tape, and talked to 16 coaches over there. <laughs> but I, I really was impressed with how you were so impressed with what's going on down here in Miami. Well, it was just the be best football team I've seen. Now, and I talked to Coach Erickson about this, and he says, you know, I'm sort of hesitant in saying this, but I have a feeling this could end up being my best football team. The coaches, you know, they've changed, as Jack Root said early, they've gone to a disciplined approach. They're on their tails. They're coaching them every snap. The practice on Thursday, yeah, it was a war out there in terms of discipline and forcing people to do what their coach do on every snap. I was very, very impressed. And plus, they're coaching the right kind of guys, fine athletes. Now, this is the team that Dennis Erickson, who played collegiately out of Montana State, I might mention. That's for you folks in Montana, by the way. But anyway... This is really the first team that he recruited. Now, Frank Costa, we asked him about the change in attitude, and here's what the quarterback had to say. So far, it's worked. But, you know, I, since I've been here as a freshman, he would come out on Fridays and you know, on practice day and, and go into our special teams, probably a special team day for us. And we have our defense over there dancing, and they'd be going through a big dance routine, and the offense would be you know, messing around, the receivers be throwing quarterbacks routes and things like that, and then we just go through our special teams to get out of there. Now it's much more business-like. It's, uh, it's a deal where our defense is going over sets and formations and motion adjustments, and our offense is going through special situations, just get like uh, coming out from the one-yard line, uh, punting from our own end zone, things like that. And uh, Carl's right, it has discipline in some way. 
Well, there they are. You can see the approach down on the sideline. Not a lot of towel waving. We're going to come back and show you Frank Costa and the offense. They've been unable to score a touchdown. Two Miami field goals up by six. There's a mighty fine football player there, Mr. Sapp. He's only a junior, but uh, I think even down here, everybody expects him to go into the NFL. He's very polite when you ask him that question. He says the right thing. What he's concentrating on is winning football games down here, but I don't think he'll be able to, to say no. They're going to come after him. A couple of expansion teams, one in Jacksonville, one up in Charlotte. He'd make a heck of a first rounder for you, let me tell you. James Stewart's in at a running back right now. Look at that defensive front for the Huskies. And Costa, with no one over there, just simply kept it, Dick. There's a broken play. <laughs> that happens everywhere. Stewart's going over there and talking to him. I think Costa might have gone the wrong way because Stewart's sort of indicating that. He just, hey, coach, that wasn't my fault. That happens. You get thinking about a lot of things. Plus, he's doing a, a check with me principle on a lot of the run plays, and, and he checked with the wrong guy that time. The Orange Bowl in Miami, and the Hurricanes favored by 15, lead on the strength of a couple of field goals, a 19-yarder and a 38-yarder. Dane Pruitt's the kicker. Trent Jones, Tellison, and Green are in, and this is Stewart. First down, Miami. A nice job by Zeb Lamelski over there. Not overpowering the defensive end, but just opening him up enough to allow that crack up inside and make the first down. Two pretty good quarterbacks go at it on Monday Night Football here on ABC. Jim Kelly and the Buffalo Bills coming off a win. And Denver. Denver's defense may be the worst I've looked at here in the last couple years. And let's see what they can do. Pride on the line. John Elway will try to generate some offense. The Broncos and the Bills, Monday night here on ABC. Three wide receiver. Costa steps away from the pressure again, comes near side and unable to hold on is freshman Green. Costa's showing some real poise. Remember, we saw him last year early in the season. He would have really not handled that pressure as well last year at that time. See, he stepped up underneath it, stayed with the concentration of the pattern, threw the ball, almost catchable, but good poise. Doesn't want to make a big mistake against Lambright, a very opportunistic defense. He was the defensive assistant under Don James out of Washington, moved to the top spot after James stepped down shortly before the start of last season. Lambright, a very positive fellow, still has a great gambling defense. They could really put some pressure on. Stewart gets through, always holds in the middle. If Malloy forced to make the stop there, if you can get through the middle of that pressing defense of the Huskies, you can turn in a gain, and he does for 19 yards. And they went north-south right at him. Just base, man-to-man -man blocking, just quick. They had the linebacker walk out of there. See, nice blocking here. Center comes and picks up here. They turn out there, and they hand it off. Look there at that. Actually, middle. they trapped it. They boo me, Brent. They had a nice trap, and he ran behind that pulling guard. Good execution. Didn't see it that way from up here. The camera doesn't blink, man. <laughs> you bet it doesn't. What a high school record he had in Vero. Timeout. Costa saw something defensively that he was not comfortable with. So he'll come over. We'll take a break. Miami leading 6-0 over the Washington Huskies. Well, there's the Bowl Coalition Top 25. That'll help sort out who is the national champion. I think the national champion will come from one of those first eight schools there. Someone will, someone will start to run the table. Not quite sure who it might be. These teams, of course, all with a chance to jump into the top ten. Nice performance by Wisconsin today. I mean, they buried an unbeaten Indiana team. They were all over Alex Smith, that great freshman running back. And that just rounds out the top 25. Tennessee, not a great shock, even though they were favored. Not a great shock that Mississippi State dumped them today. James Stewart's the running back. Chris T. Jones, blue shoulder, due back later for Miami. Harris, the motion man, number three. They go to him when he's in motion. Costa guns it for him, and there's a penalty flag down. Incomplete. Lions with the coverage. The Huskies are playing tight, tight coverage. They're going to have to threaten them deep. Again, go back to the weak side of the formation. Get the defense all the way over their strong field and go back to that 
single coverage guy if they're going to hit the big one. Huskies are really challenging, playing with great confidence. He has roots out in the state of Washington. His father was the coach up in Everett, Washington. And matter of fact, Jimmy Lambright played for his daddy for a time in high school. He, yeah, played for him for I think it was a year. Dennis, of course, becoming a coach. So there's a lot of connections here between Dennis Erickson and Jim Lambright and the Hurricanes. Among, among assistant coaches as well, Brent. Yeah, Jack Aroot, that's some connection, huh? Well, indeed it is. But, Brent, you want to know how tough Jim Lambright was as a linebacker at Everett High School? It seems like he was knocked out six separate occasions in his senior year. So there was a nearby Air Force base. They went to the Air Force base and got one of those F-16 fighter pilot helmets put that on him. He went out. He got hit three or four times. He says, I look like a nerd. Long before nerd was popular, he says, give me back my old helmet. Costa's got trouble. Buried from the backside. And it got goes the over the turnover. It was Richie Chambers who jarred the ball out for Lambright. Frank Costa should have been able to see that coming. They had 10 people up on the line of scrimmage. You know, you don't do that normally and go back and play zone. Even if you have your back to it, to the right side of your screen, 32 chambers coming. See, he's not looking for him, but he knows he's coming. He's got to get rid of the football. Got to get rid of the football. Now, Jason Chorick recovered the fumble. First turnover of the game. Damon Heward with an opportunity. That's what a defensive coach like Lambright loves better than ever. Give me a turnover and get it in positive territory. Kaufman now cuts to the right for four yards. See, that's what they like to do. They like to get in the two tight ends, two wide ups, balance the front, keep the line of scrimmage, and let this fine running back find a place to run. Against the Ohio State Buckeyes, he found a place for 211 yards. Tougher today. But if you give him a crack, he'll end up in the end zone. Again, two tight ends, Brent, two wide outs. Heward, complete to Bruner. And I believe he's short of a first down. We'll see C.J. Richardson, number 19, was there for the Canes. They have a special coverage package in for Bruner. They're going to set the safety in his face, play him tough, and bracket him inside and outside on a lot of formations with two linebackers. He's going to have a tough time getting the ball consistently, especially on passing downs. Dickey did step beyond the marker. Let me correct myself on that. That is a first down for the Huskies, so that was an excellent move by Bruner in going out of bounds. The ball is at the 38-yard line. Marley in defensively for the Canes. Heward ran the option. Look at number 96, Kennard Lang, came from behind. They got some good blocks, but it looked like it's going to break from up here. But everybody can run so well. You said Kennard Lang. He's a big 255-pound defensive lineman coming down the line of scrimmage to make that play. A backup player, uh, an outstanding athlete. They think he's going to be a dandy. He's a redshirt freshman from Orlando. Dick, I, can you make a living offensively with a great running back and one tight end? Tough. When you have very fine corners, tough. Because they'll challenge you at all outside or go double zone and double them up. Heward off a play fake, incomplete, and that time he wanted Conwell, his other tight end. This is going to leave them with a third and seven. See, he saw the coverage. He knew what he was attacking. He thought he had it because it was the right coverage. Just hit in between the rolled-up corner and the, and the safety rotating over there and just couldn't get it done. and Janoski being bottled up. Heward will try again. Complete. And it is Bruner, his main man, for another Washington first down. It's going to be very close. Let's hold on where they spot it now. The one thing you're going to do for a quarterback to let him throw the ball is giving pass protection. Peterson here does a nice job of turning out picks up Langs. He does a good job. He jams with his hands, keeps his feet moving. There's the pocket. There's time to throw the completed pass. It was not a favorable spot for Bruner. 
and that leaves this in jeopardy a little bit. Let's see what the chain gang proves one way or the other. Got it. Greg McCacken, the defensive coordinator for the Hurricanes, they have a goal every week. Don't give up a touchdown after a sudden change. In other words, after a turnover, you shut them out. Don't do it. And they've been very effective at doing that so far this year. Dick, this is an amazing stat, but all four of Bruner's catches have been for first downs, and that's their only first downs in this game. He has been their big receiver in this game. Ball inside the Huskies 30 a collision Heward and Kaufman run into each other. That was an ugly looking play. Boy there's a miscommunication right there. One guy running one play and a quarterback running the other. They're discussing it right there trying to figure out who's at fault. It doesn't matter. It's still minus two yards. That's an experienced pair right back there. That should not happen. Unless it was an audible and one person didn't hear the audible. <laughs> See, this is what you don't want. You don't want second and long. The freshman wide receiver, as you watch that replay again, has checked into the game. Fred Coleman is in on second and 12. Heward looks in his direction but cannot get away from Riley. He has great pass rush skills. If you jam him and set short, you're, you can block him. If you give him any room to get running upfield, then he really becomes a pass rusher. He has 4740 speed for a 293 pound uh, defensive lineman. Boy, that's awfully fast. He'll probably play defensive end in the NFL and not defensive tackle. The life of Riley, it's no life of Riley playing on him. He too creates a lot of negative yardage plays. Interesting that we have a KC Jones and a Pat Riley for you hoop fans. Third and 17. It's Lewis. He's picked up by Kaufman. Marley coming after the quarterback. The screen is there. It's Thomas. They've got him one-on-one -on -one coverage. A beautiful call against the Blitz. Nice job by Bill Diedrich coming up that screen call. See, you actually should defense a screen easily with the Blitz. The man-to-man -man didn't get on him. Watch this block by Napoleon Kaufman, ladies and gentlemen. Number eight shows he's not just a running back. He picks up Lewis. Now Heward beats Marley. There he is. See, now the, there should be a defender locked onto him man to man. He might have got picked off by the screen blocking wall. I don't know. But they did a good job of handling that blitz. Now first and goal. This could be huge after Richard Thomas ignites the charge for the visiting Huskies. Kaufman is behind Heward. Heward hit on the release, intercepted. And it was Ray Lewis at the goal line picking it off. But it was the fact that he was under enormous pressure when he released the ball. And he had a tight end wide open for a touchdown. There, see, the pressure was better than the sack. They hit him, threw the ball. Wobbly picked off. Tight end was wide open. Watch the tight end over here come right down. And doesn't do any good. Good, strong fake inside there. Now watch the tight end. See, he's there. Look at he's standing in the end zone. He wants the football. Can't get it off. And credit Twan Russell. Twan Russell came off the corner and came free and hit Heward as he was releasing the ball. That allowed Lewis to make an easy interception as the ball fluttered into his hands. Now I want you to watch Russell. Watch number 45 coming from the blind side. Got him right there on the left hip. And that's what allowed Lewis to have an easy interception and there's a whistle. Boy, turnovers are bad, but when you turn it over, going into score, a chance to get back in the ball game and take, take the lead, and you turn it over, boy, that kills you. The one thing from a defensive standpoint, if you turn it over down here, you still leave the offensive team about 90 yards to go to make anything out of it. That is if there is an advantage in this situation. Husky defense playing very well today. Colorado up 14-3 as a five-point underdog in Ann Arbor, so that's speed, speed, speed. What a 
a great young linebacker Lewis is. How about this? 14 shutouts down here during that fabulous win streak of theirs. Opportunistic defense. Another big turnover. Oh, great Stewart defense. was jammed at the line that time. Justin Thomas, number five amongst the Huskies there. Justin Thomas did a beautiful job of fundamental defensive technique. Not as big as that offensive tackle, but he stuffed them with good fundamental technique. Right over here. Now watch him come in and wham, stuff it right up. See, he pops him right up there, stuffs him at the point, ricochets off, and makes the play. Can't do it much better than that. Second and 17. This has become some defensive game, hasn't it? Yeah, two very, very well-coached defensive football teams. I still think Miami's got to go ahead and test them deep more often. Huskies don't have that advantage because they lack the speed at the receiver position. Stewart, nothing doing. They tried that same trap play back inside. They pulled Alan Simonette. It was stuffed inside there by the two defensive tackles. Mike Iwaliki. Iwaliko, rather. He's a very, very active guy. Remember him in the Ohio State game? Made a lot of good plays, Brent. Yeah, he had a fine game against the Buckeyes. Third and 16. What I remember is the good times we had in Seattle, man. That was oh. a great road trip. Hey, that, that is one of my favorite places to go. Yeah, me too. Good city. Good stadium, good people. They and love the good Huskies. Food. Good food there. Oh, the market, market down there. was good down there, huh? <laughs> they got how many wide receivers they got out there? Five in this package? I think so. Yeah, they, they do. Yeah. Uh, here's that screen. This is German trying to slip free. He was stumbling all the way. And they needed, remember, 17 yards to get the first down. So they are far short of it. And they send the punt team onto the field. And Termaine Mack, he gets to see if he can deliver another one. He is such an active football player. So we got an official there. Took a whack. Yeah, official. Seven yards. Fourth down and nine. Thirteen yard line. Checking his glands, yeah. You know, checking his jaw. I must have got hit in the jaw. Yeah, it looks like it. Huh? Well, that's smart. It's tough down there. Well, we got a moment here. Let me remind you about prime time tonight. It's, you know, the commission will be along, but uh, how about uh, Crocodile Dundee 2? Have you seen that one? That's a good one. That's a family movie. Everybody can enjoy that one tonight on the network. <laughs> and the commish, he's coming on. <laughs> Old Crocodile Dundee. You ever been down to Australia, Dick? No, I haven't, but my wife wants to go. Yeah, we ought to go down there and see if we can find old Crocodile. He has some good times back there in the bush, right? They have good wine in Australia, too. Not that beer, either. Right? No. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to go back there. He's Bob Marley's young son now. Saw him yesterday. I said, Rohan, I said, you're looking more and more like Pops every day, man. I said, Rohan, I'll tell you what you do. You sign with the World League. You, you go over there. There it is, huh? See? See what's happening? Bring on no locks line. here. That's Look at right. that. No locks. He looks much better. I said, you go over to Paris or someplace like that at World League, man. You go to the World League Hall of Fame. He really can play football. He's just about four inches too short, but he can play. Jack Aroon. Well, Brent, remember last year he decided to shave his head, and, and there was a lot of talk about the fact that Rowan Marley didn't like to talk about the fact that he was the son of the great Bob Marley. But he has a daughter that was born a little bit after the the debacle at Arizona last year in the in the bowl game she's in Haiti right now and Marley has embraced the Rastafarian religion he says the dreadlocks are what I am I'm a Rasta and I will be a Rasta and he says a lot of this has helped me to stay more focused not only upon football but also upon life yeah I should be proud of pops uh, may not want to talk about it but he didn't have any trouble spending the inheritance did he I saw some Rastafarians on one time on a vacation over there. I tell you, they scared me to death. <laughs> I hope he didn't fall into that group. <laughs> right. Yeah. Montego Bay. We'll be down there for a golf tournament in December. Now there's Napoleon Cox. What's his stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Then we tried everybody else. Why don't you come on dinner? Yeah, I would really be good you. at golf, wouldn't I? Yeah, my 106 <laughs> average, I'd really be good. <laughs> oh, Chrissy is standing back there to, uh, <laughs> to punt it. And here's the time they need a good long snap. <laughs> yeah, let's see if my young man, Mac, yeah. can deliver. Right there. How's he punt? punt? How's he punt? Pick it up and run. Wow. Now Kaufman. Oh, wow. Woo! 
what a special team player C.J. Richardson is. No one takes any more pride in special teams than C.J. Richard. And how do you do, Mr. Kaufman? Does he hit you? He came here as a running back. Big oh. special teams player last week, as you were talking about early. He just liked, they thought about taking him off the special teams. And he said, no, coach, I would like to stay on the special team. He demonstrates why here. He is a good open field tackler. Plus, he's instinctive. He knows where to get. He plays the discipline, and wham, fundamentally, he can hit you. And after that, Leon Neal checks in for a spell at running back. He's replaced Kaufman. He is set down there in the eye. and. Thomas just blasted into the middle of that defensive line. A little bit different strategy. Baraka Short, number 50, who's getting a start today, made the stop. Maybe they're going to run the fullback and uh, try to do some business straight ahead, Dick. Yeah, and maybe come off with the option. I look for him to get the ball to Eric Bjornsson. Now, Eric Bjornsson's not a, bur a burner, but he's tall, and he can leap and make the big plays, and he's made a couple big plays already, but he hasn't had his hands on the ball yet. I keep trying to tell the coaching staff to put that end around pass in, but they never put it in the game for me. He was the quarterback there. Here's that double tight end formation. They like to run check with me counters on that. Maybe not on a second down situation. Need eight yards. And uh, now even for Sapp and, uh, and the rest of those fellows, Riley in the middle of that defensive line, can't, you know, it's not fair giving them a head start. They're tough enough. You bet they're tough enough. Offsides on the defense. They're drawing them offsides a couple times in this game, haven't they? Using maybe a little bit of a hard yeah. count down there, barking out that second sound just a little bit tougher. Well, a reminder coming up in the half. John Saunders will take you around the country and tell you what's going on. He gets you update with Aaron McNair and all the rest of the highlights. Arizona doing a number on Stanford last time we checked. Colorado. Beating Michigan at another one of the big ones. Down here. What a winning streak. They've got going down here in the Orange Bowl, huh? You know, Miami moves that defensive front around a little bit. And if you're the offensive center, one time you have Sap, the other time you have Riley, the other time you have a headache. <laughs> well, there comes another one of the headaches. Yeah, but he did a nice job that time. Frank Garcia took him on, kept his pads down, did a good job. And he was an offensive guard last year. So he did a nice job. you got to give him credit on that. You remember big old Lincoln Kennedy? Oh, yeah, I remember He him. might be watching here this afternoon. He's playing with the Atlanta. He needs to get it moving. He's bigger than Lincoln now. I think he's yeah. up to a Mack truck. He's bigger than the tower. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. Yeah, three, nine, three, three, three. They got two drives out of this group. I still think they've got to be very pleased that it's just a six to nothing ball game. Oh, I think they should be very encouraged. They had one bad series with the interception down at the goal line. They could easily be ahead in this game or down by three. No, the Huskies have to be delighted. Alert play action pass. Need a little more offense. I mean, the Kane defense has smothered oh. them. They have smothered them. Penalty flags flying all over. Short was in there. Scott was in there. You didn't like that, Mr. Vermeer. No, I don't think uh, they were all. I don't know uh, if they were all on the same page. Wouldn't be the first time here this afternoon. Yeah, dude. Boy, third down and inches to go. Gosh, guys. Concentration. Lambright, assistant coaching at that time is a lot easier. <laughs> How could that happen, man? When it's yeah. Third Sometimes it's late getting the call in. They don't get the communication real good in the huddle. Uh, shouldn't happen. Should not happen. This is tough now. This is what's tough. Third and six against these guys is tough. Go find 85. Bruner's been their first down wide receiver. He lines up at tight end. They've been able to get him free there with Conwell. Down to the left of the quarterback, the two tight ends. Hewitt looks the other direction, though, and snaps one into the hands nice of a wide receiver. Dave Janusky makes the first catch of the game for a wide receiver and a first down Huskies. Dave did a real nice job of reading the zone. See, they were going to show a cover two, meaning corners rolled up, two deep safeties, and he rolled out to the outside there and just settled in the hole just enough to take advantage of that little hole in the defense. Well, Huskies on the move again. See if they can cash an opportunity here in the first half. About 2.15 to go. Hewitt getting time from his offensive line, and there's Coleman, the freshman. Freddie Coleman with his first catch, and Carlos Jones buries him. 
Carlos Jones can bury you and he can outrun you. You know, he's the Big East 100 meter sprint champion. You talk about speed in the secondary, the guy can run. And he just proved he can tackle. Kaufman returns. Interesting graphic as you think ahead. Yes. They will tell you, though, that they grew too conservative in the second half against Ohio State. They tried to run the clock out a little bit too early in that game, and they feel that they should have put, on, put down the throttle a little bit. Hewitt's getting time right now. Receivers were covered that time, so he'll slide into the 30-yard line and down to the 29-yard line. Going to be a little short of a first down, I believe. This will be third and two. He wanted to go downfield with the ball. He saw the safety sitting back in there and didn't want to do it. See the cover two look? Up short, up short, deep here, dear. He wanted to try to get down there, didn't like it, got the rush outside, and came up underneath on the scramble. Made a good decision. See, see him short coverage out there. Safety now settling in a hole there. He didn't like what he saw, scrambled, slides in, almost first down. Dick, I want to come back and ask you if you would use a prevent in this situation or if you'd have continued to attack. We'll be right back with that in a moment. Welcome to San Francisco's Keysar Stadium. <laughs> Keysar <laughs> Little mist Stadium. over there. I see, I remember uh, that. Gee, I remember that. I saw Hugh McElhaney, a great Husky, uh, run some kickoffs back for touchdown that ball. I used to go watch that John stadium. Brody whack the Bears Joe out Joe Perry, there. Bob oh, St. Clair, so Bob Tonoff, and they had some fun. Leo Namalini. Hey, you're talking my guys. Hugh McElhaney might be watching us up there in Seattle. Hello, Hugh. Yeah, how you doing? Third down. Hey, Look at that efficiency. Yeah. Huh? Not bad. Darn good. Now it's third and two here with a minute eight to go in the first half. Huskies down by a pair of field oh, goals. Oh, hello. Nothing doing as Kenny Holmes comes in and cleans up on the play. Decision time for Washington. They're three short of that first down, and they'll have to attempt a field goal here with John Wales. We got a moment here. Let's check in on some prime time shows headed your way this fall on ABC. And the viewing's not bad on ABC on a Saturday afternoon, the home of college football. And here, Miami, with that spectacular home winning streak, leading Washington, but only by a pair of field goals. The Canes have been unable to score a touchdown here this afternoon against Lambright's defense. And Miami's defensive coaching staff brings the team over for a little huddle here, Dick. Greg Mackin's defense is pretty spectacular, too, at the Canes. You know, they haven't given up a touchdown yet. Now, this, at the end of this, if they don't score, that's 12 quarters of football and no touchdowns given up. Pretty good defensive football. Both teams, as you said, playing real good defense, sound, aggressive, well coached. Dick on a fourth and three, would you kick, would you fake, or would you have called a play from scrimmage? Well, if I, I have confidence in my field goal kicker, I go ahead and kick it right here. They say he's the most improved player on the team. He's getting a chance to prove it right now. 47-yarder, and it could be huge. Garcia snaps it. Bjornsson puts it down. And Washington on the board, and now it looks like a great decision. 6-3. And a good momentum thing for them to go in at the halftime with a positive thing. Now what they've got to do is make sure they don't allow a big kickoff return because Jamie German is really capable of it. Maybe you just squib kick it. Nice Watch placement. Bjornsson's hold. Yeah, good hold. It was, he's got it down there in time. Not a great grab with both hands, but he got it down there in time. And this kid, this thing would have been good from about 50. He really nailed it. Lambright liked that one. Boy, you, you get that little edge. You haven't been able to get anything, and Jim says, nice going, young man. That's why I say you're the most improved player on our football team. I think the most important play of the first half was Lawyer Malloy stepping into the hole when the Canes had it first and goal to begin a series, and no on question. second down, he came free on the fullback. They had to settle for a field goal. If they had taken the ball right in on their first offensive series of the game, this might have been a different football game. No question. And, you know, you turn that around, the other great defense they play from Miami, they get pressure when that, when Huskies are taking it down. So it's defensive pressure on both sides have made big plays. Shipman, Al Shipman, and Jamie German. I, I wouldn't kick it to him. I'd just squib it. Yes, I have confidence in my kickoff coverage. They've only given up 16-yard average in five kickoff returns, but uh, I'll tell you, they got some gifted people back there. Just let it bounce around. You know, with all this speed, 
give you an idea about the Washington defense. They have not given up a long pass reception yet today, have they? They kicked it to him. They'll give a chance. Yeah. Shipman from the one. He's got some juice. 25, and he's got some power. Shipman to the 31-yard line, and Malloy is there again for the Huskies. Well, he's just a redshirt sophomore out of West Palm Beach, Palm Red Lakes High School. He came into the ballgame with 11 carries, averaging 14 yards a return, had an 82-yard run for a touchdown. You know, he has explosive speed and, and running ability demonstrated there. Larry Jones. Shotgun look. The Huskies are not playing a prevent defense. Four-man rush. Complete to Harrison out of bounds. And that was Reggie Reeser, number four, the best cover man so far this year for the Huskies. Very good read by Frank. He wanted to go downfield. He saw the rolled-up coverage, and the coverage backed off. The longer he held the ball, the deeper the coverage got over there. They faked the man, moved it to zone, threw it to the out-of-bounds guy. Need to get the ball downfield, though, with only 34 seconds remaining. Second curious, and seven. Curious to see what coverage they come up with here now. That last time, now it looks like they're going to go to that too deep. Played a little zoo, a looser, too deep safeties, more of a prevent type look. It's not, though. Costa. The interference is called, and that gives him a field goal opportunity. Lawyer Malloy was all over green. But you know, it actually looked like from up here that the receiver ran into him. Let's see how they interpret this. Here's your Till Green, 87. Now you're right, Brent. It's uh, Malloy runs into him. See, now Malloy is a safety rotating inside out on him. Can't see the ball coming. It's hard to stop. He runs into him. Not the worst of plays with time running out. Remember, this is not That's the cool. NFL rule. So we'll go back and we'll have a 15-yard penalty. So it is not the worst time to commit interference down The only there. thing, that's a safety rotating over that side on the Pass other side of the field. On the defense, automatic first down. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Should have gone over there. One-on-one -on -one coverage. See, the defense rotated to him, and he threw it into the rotation. Folks, did I say anything about the coverage? <laughs> huh? I'm no coach. I'm just saying it was a 15-yard penalty. Ball up at the 49-yard line, and Costa going again. There's where he should have gone last time. He's there going he is. Out. Gone. Oh, hang on. E.C. Tellison coughs up six. He had him beat. Should have gone there on the last pass. Good coaching by the offensive staff to recognize what the coverage was probably going to be. Rich Olson calls, hey, let's get after it again. And Tellison doesn't come up with it. Now, he's a redshirt senior, fifth-year senior. He's got to make this play. See, it's single coverage. He's got to be deep. Here's Malloy trying to come over, help him can't get there the quarterback has got to be sick this little paisan is upset i asked him about his favorite italian restaurant in philly he wouldn't name it coming back to the got another receiver open touchdown green you tell green the freshman on the board how about that 51 yards A star is born in the Orange Bowl. More appropriately, I should say, another star is born. It looked like Russell Harrison, the say the corner, expected some help on it. Here he is rolled up outside, expecting the safety to get over there. See, he's expecting the help, but he should have chucked the man right there, not let him run clean down there. The safety doesn't get there. A blowing coverage. A blowing coverage touchdown. Again, a good call by Rich Olson. Going deep two times in a row. Actually, three times in a row. That is amazing with time running out that they were yeah. able to get deep that often. Now, Dick, there's a situation where you might want to prevent against this kind of speed. Oh, no question. No question. They had the right call. Someone broke down in the execution of it. I don't think that's a coaching error. I think that was a defensive uh, breakdown, either huddle call in the huddle was screwed up, or they just blew it from assignment standpoint after the ball was snapped. Now, with the scoreboard sitting on a 12 for the Canes, Dennis Erickson calling a timeout because they want to go to a uh, two-point play here. But, Dick, let's go They'll back go and take two. a look at this play. 
this with this youngster's speed, you cannot overlook 87. No, here it is. See, now, I think he thought the safety was going to get here as he rolled up right there. It didn't happen. See, hold, freeze it right there. Freeze it right there. See, he's starting to pause right here, and he's still pedaling. He should be coming here. He should be coming there. See, he's already there in his zone. He doesn't get him. He's late in getting him. Actually, that was the defense called. That is a rotation defense. They're playing quarter, quarter, half field defense, and Harrison was just looking into the backfield and not paying attention to the receiver. And he wasn't the only receiver open either. No. Did you happen to see some of those yeah. orange jerseys on the other side? Yeah. We burned that coverage. There you are, young man. He averaged 19 yards a catch in high school. That Great. shows why. Remember him for your fantasy team, folks. In about three years, he'll be there. Their two-point play, they like to throw the slots on option patterns. Costa has Shipman flurrying middle. There it is to German for the two-point conversion. And suddenly they look like the Canes. This is the team we remember from the Jimmy Johnson days. Strike fear into the heart of the secondary. He just started outside wide and came flat down inside. The slot man ran the option hook inside like there. They swung the back. Good time. Not lost the game. It was led by seven points or more in the last 112 games. It was always the first time, though. Boy, it's nice to see a Miami team that doesn't taunt after they do something positive down there in the end zone. Just take the ball back, hand it to the official, give it to me again, and let's score six more. Don't you like to see that? Well, now, that there there's a strange sight for me, folks, down there on a Miami sideline. Considering what Jimmy Johnson did to Notre Dame down here, I never thought I'd see the day <laughs> when a priest would go down there. And I know that, oh, times have changed here in Miami, folks. <laughs> Holy Toledo's, look at this. Here it is right here. He's going to come right down inside there. He's running a hook in here, and he's running a wide pattern. He reads it properly, plus he gets the time. He gets the time. See, he pulls the coverage out. He's running underneath there. He lets the defensive linebacker run underneath with the swing. Nice job by Jamie German and Costa. All right, now it's 14-3, and in the closing seconds of the first half, the Canes Burnham, Sheehy, buried at the 19-yard line. Now remember that graphic we showed you early, what happens when you fall seven points behind Miami in this stadium. It is incredible. They have not given up a touchdown this year, Brent. Twelve quarters of football. Now they haven't played, the, you know, the toughest teams in the country. I think the Huskies the best team. It's still tough to hold people scoreless for twelve quarters that way from a touchdown standpoint. You know, some of the fellows up at ESPN who see a lot of games, John Saunders and those fellows, they're telling me don't overlook. Do not overlook Florida State. John will be along at ABC halftime here, too. Intercepted. Get out of bounds. Pearson out of bounds with one second to go and time to attempt a field goal. Mark Bruner, the tight end, fell down. He cut to the outside going to the porter, corner. Heward let it go, and Bruner slipped and fell on that turf. Not used to playing on grass. He did not get out of, out of bounds in time, and the crowd not happy. Crowd not happy. End of the first half. John Saunders coming your way from New York. 14-3, the Canes lead it. Miami's 58-game home winning streak intact. They lead over the Washington Huskies 14-3 at the half. Weather certainly could become a factor. Depth and the heat and humidity down here in the Orange Bowl of Miami. We'll see how it unfolds. It is still very warm out right now and uh, probably not going to cool down much here in the second half. 90 degrees, the temperature has gone up, and the heat index, 97 degrees. And, uh, Dick Vermeer, you're looking very snappy there with your suspenders. You like these things? I'm a little short. My wife need, dresses I me well. I wish we'd put the short <laughs> sleeves on here, partner. Listen, we had a defensive battle in the first half, some great defensive plays. Uh, you know, with the exception of Yattel Green's big play, I think the Husky defense would be very pleased with the way they were playing. But the Miami defense, I don't know if you could score on those people. They are unbelievable. Well, let's go back down to the goal line now and show you some of the key moments here in the first half of the game. 
Lawyer Malloy, number nine, remember, created the big play right down inside. Number nine going to shoot the gap. He should have been able to be picked up right there by the guard, Ina, but he doesn't see him, and he should have picked him up. That was a mental breakdown. Big, big play. Stop the drive. Now, what's fair is fair. Off the corner, Tuan Green. 40, there he is. Wham! He nails him. Tuan Russell, rather, gets the interception to Lewis. Now you tell Green, a red shirt freshman, really getting to play for the first time. He's had a hamstring problem, so he didn't play last week. Number 87, Russell Harris, 26. Sits there, he looks in the backfield way, way, way too long, ignores a gifted wide receiver who's just waiting for that long home run to come down. Two-point conversion, and there are the numbers from the first half. Washington with 34 snaps, two more than the Hurricanes, but take a look at the total stat. Yards, 202 to 84, and down we go to Jackaroo. Jack? Well, Brent, Coach Jim Lambright talked to his team, tried to get them to forget about that last possession that resulted in the points for the Miami Hurricanes. But he did say that they have definitely shut down Napoleon Kaufman, and they are going to make some major changes, specifically in some off-tackle plays in the second half. I had a chance to talk to Nipper as well. I said, boy, they've really shut you down cold. He said, look, that doesn't bother me as much as us winning the game. If they want to shut me down, maybe we can get some points from someone else. Well, they'll get a chance here with the first series. Huskies will receive. Huskies have not scored a touchdown in the second half in their previous games. The Hurricanes have not given up a touchdown in the second half previous games. Good kick. It'll come out on the 20-yard line. Nice kickoff. C.J. Richardson went down there to say hello anyway. Damon Heward and the Husky offense will go back to work. And let's see, Coach Vermeil, what kind of new wrinkles they'll put into this offense. Well, I think draw, trap, and screen against that type of defense is as good as anything, Prince. Offset the fullback. That's yeah. the first look. Motion. Now they get the, the only two linebackers inside. You got to throw it out here to this guy. Hoffman, there was daylight there to the 25-yard line, and Rohan Marley met him. See, what they'll do now against these tackles, instead of taking them straight on with the guard, they'll block down with the tackle and step around the guard. A little less physical at the point of attack that way. You just have to make sure. You'll watch to the right side of your screen. The tackle will block down. See, in TC-54, he steps around it. A little easier for the guard to do that. There's their All-American defensive lineman, Warren Sapp, and he was being met by a couple of the big fellas of the Huskies, and they did a pretty good job on him that time. Second down now, and Heward sets that screen play, and it's Thomas, the fullback. He slips a tackle, first down Huskies, and he breaks free at 45. Thomas, with great speed, busts into the open. 20, 10-yard line. Oh, into the end zone. Napoleon Kaufman came out of nowhere to throw the last block. And it's Thomas, the fullback, goes for a 75-yard touchdown. How about that? <laughs> That's his first touchdown reception this year. And he's a little bit tired. Long way to run. But screen passes against this defense, as I said, Brent. Pretty good. Now, you've got to execute it well. See, he got a knockdown block there. Good skill in. He just cut back. Poor tackling right there. Now, Kaufman, number eight, well, who's the fastest man on the offensive team, he's out of the picture. He will appear right here. And watch him get a block. He likes to play football. Well, I want to tell you, we just uh, had a development in Coach Erickson over there on that other sideline. Watching Thomas scamper into the end zone, he's got to be wondering about the decision to kick it off to start the second half. You might recall that Washington received the game's opening kickoff. And the Canes, with their defense so dominant, they decided to go back on defense down here. I and think they ought to really, go for two, and that's what they're going to do, Brent. It really blew up in their face. Look for, for a waggle pass now. Concentrate on Bruner, and they'll come out here, fake the action to the left, and now come out naked and try to get him the ball there or back in the end zone. Got it. Got him, Janoski. Big play. The Huskies score their first touchdown of the second half in 94 and 
the Canes give up their first touchdown on defense this year. We got a ball game. In a stunning turnaround here in the Orange Bowl, Washington with a 75-yard touchdown pass to the fullback Richard Thomas. The Canes electing to kick it off again to start the second half, and they are burned. And now the Huskies' confidence soaring down here in South Florida. John Wales to kick it off. Shipman. Nice play. Shipman out to the 24-yard line, and Jerry Jensen bringing him down. Here's that last big screen pass. Dick, this Richard is almost Thomas. a mistake by Kaufman. He's enthused. He wants to make the play, but it became very close to a clip. Better off to stay out of it when it's an insignificant play. Here's the two-point play. They're going to block here and freeze get action this way get the linebackers going this way then the quarterback's going to come out and hit the crossing pattern behind it he fakes action comes out there no block it there he's the tight ends come now he's looking for this man wide receiver coming across did a nice job executing costa costa goes deep on the opening play and that time oh, oh, reggie yeah. reeser was in behind jones <laughs> we're going to stay back there now they're going to stay back there now. Well, Rich Olson said that he wanted to stretch him, push him vertical. He sure did there. Probably didn't do it enough early in the first quarter. Defense not sure how to react there on the bench. That's the first time they've yielded a touchdown in three games. Beat up on Georgia Southern. They went out and buried Arizona State. We're ahead here 14-3 until that stunning turnaround. Now it is 14-11 Canes. Stewart's the running back. Slips. He was cut off at the pass, and Deke Devers came through, number 43. Deke giving him a little bit of the hurricane type of pressure. Get up underneath, create havoc in their own backfield. He does a good job of that. He had three tackles for loss coming into the ball game and three sacks. He shows he can get into that backfield. Third and 11. The lights here. The twilight starting to flash off the helmets. The Huskies believing now. Harris is the motion receiver on the cutback. Costa. Intercepted. Washington was Russell Harrison walks in again. Back-to-back -back touchdowns for the Huskies who have taken the lead in Miami. Brent, the wide receiver, you tell Green, fell down. There was no receiver standing there. Easy interception. They gave him a two-deep zone look, but instead they blitzed the outside linebackers. See, he's going to think it's a, a zone right now, but it's not. It's man-to-man. -man. Here comes the blitzes off the corner. He throws it out. See, no wide receiver. He's supposed to run a comeback out there. No comeback. The only comeback is Russell Harrison getting his sixth interception in his career. Now, he's the guy that gave up the first big touchdown pass right at the end of the half, so he feels a little bit better after that one. Russell Harrison gets even as he picks off Costa and goes 34 yards. The Huskies have scored on a 75-yard play, now a 34-yard INT, two huge plays, and the extra point hammered by John Wales. Washington, 18, Miami, 14. 13 minutes to go in the third. This could be a shocker. A dramatic and sudden turnaround. The Washington Huskies lead by four, 18-14. Now, according to the play-by-play -play sheet, and I saw Warren Sapp at the coin flip, and I wasn't sure what he had done down there, when they won the coin flip. And instead of saying we defer, he elected to defend the East goal. There was a light breeze. But what that does, it allows Washington to come out against Dennis Erickson to start the second half. It is now Washington's choice. They elected to receive again. 
And I will guarantee you that if Sap and the Hurricanes had it to do all over again at the opening coin flip of this game, they would win it and elect to defer. Now it is uphill, favored by 15. They trail by four. 13 minutes left in the third quarter. German a yard deep. German. And he could not get away from Tony Parrish. The they ball fumbled the ball. Down. Parrish whacked the ball. Hold on now as the referees. It goes to Washington. Washington recovers the turnover on the kickoff. This is stunning. He took it two yards deep in the end zone, brought it out, had something going, had second effort going. He's got the ball a little bit loose in that right hand. He gets up right there. The ball drops out on the ground. Now the pileup occurs. Hard to tell who in heck to make the play, but it was Tony, Tony Parrish that hit him. Here's now Tony Parrish right there, and the ball gets knocked out. Tony Parrish knocked it out, and he fell on the fumble. And now the Huskies leading by four, 18-14, with another opportunity. Damon Huard, it'll be up to the Kane defense. They're coming after him here, right? Bringing the outside dog. Hoffman looking for a cutting spot. Quickly, we go to Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, we're with Darren Smith, who's a former Miami Hurricane. Darren, you talked about what happened at the start of the game with the flip of the coin. Tell us your understanding of the call. Well, from what I heard, uh, the word we want to kick instead of the word we defer was used. And, you know, in my opinion, I think that the official should step in and, and explain to the player, when you say we kick, you're not saying we defer. But instead, he just said, okay, well, you're going to kick off. And, uh, and that's why you had to kick off twice. And instead of saying we defer and Washington having a chance to choose whether they want to receive or not. So, I mean, it was just a big misunderstanding. I've seen and, that Brent, it could be a, and it could be a costly misunderstanding. That happened once before, Jack, in a huge playoff game in the old American Football League. Abner Haynes for Hank Scram did the same thing out there at the coin toss. And now Dennis Erickson and the Canes are back by four, shaken up as Malcolm Pearson, who intercepted that ball toward. Now I go back to the play at the closing moments of the first half when the Canes also were denied an opportunity to attempt a field goal. This has been a dramatic turnaround in favor of Washington. Second down and six. It's Kaufman into the middle of the defense, and Ray Lewis is there. It's a good approach offensively, Brent. Just line up, let your offensive lineman come off the ball, nail it, man and zone blocking in there. Let them release some of that enthusiasm by blocking people and knocking them off the ball, trying to find this little guy a crack to run in. Third and three. Left side, first down. Boy, he can bend it. See, if the line of scrimmage is clean, they get any kind of movement, he can start inside, constrict the defense, and he can accelerate outside as he did then. It was a tight formation, therefore a tight defense. He bounced outside nicely. It is a first and goal for the Huskies. Leading by four. They have a couple of reverses in their game plan, Brent. Maybe not a good time here, but sure would catch it. They're coming off the point. Kaufman for two more. See, he wanted to cut back. Like you said, Warren Sapp did not allow the cutback. Get inside this red zone. Miami plays tough in there. They like to play man-to-man -man coverage anyway. So they have left field to defense down here. They can get right up on those receivers' face. The receiver most apt to catch the ball in the goal line area would be Mark Burner, the tight end. Tight end. We'll take a break. Doesn't get any better than this, does it? 
Oh, boy. CFA College Football on ABC, brought to you by AT&T. We help put your world within reach. And Amstel Light, who says nothing's perfect. The Orange Bowl in Miami, a 58-game home winning streak, the longest in the history of NCAA Division I football on the line. Second and goal at the Miami 8 for the Washington Huskies, who lead it by four. Hewer to the end zone incomplete. Good decision to get over there against that single coverage, but he just threw it too high. Now, Eric Bjornsson at six foot five can get up there and take it away from a shorter corner at five foot nine, but he got to throw it close enough. A field goal would put the Huskies up by seven, but they want the touchdown. Thing here, he doesn't want to get the turnover. Hey, be satisfied with the, the field goal. Just don't do something stupid. Third and goal at the eighth. Heward runs the option. Heward toward Fumble. Fumble. Fumble in the end zone recovered by Washington. Now there is the other Sapp Sapp. who's on the field, a member of the offensive line. And now the Huskies celebrate in the end zone where Sapp recovered it. It was not fourth down now. It's yeah. going to be a touchdown. If it had been fourth down, they'd have brought it back to the spot where it was fumbled, but it was third and goal. So take a look at this now. Legal all the way. You see they got the defense all kicked over here, so they run the option over here. Get him out number. He can't pitch it. They do a good job there. He sees the crack up inside. He gets a wide, a wide receiver block, a tackle block right there. The ball drops out right there. Freeze it right there. See, there's the ball right there in the left-hand corner. There it goes. Sapp picks it up. Up by 10, you kick it. John Wales adds the extra point. How about that in the great Pacific Northwest? Are you enjoying this? The Washington Huskies, a 15-point underdog. I'll tell you where they're not very happy right now. In South Florida, the work has been cut out for the Miami Hurricanes. They must dig it out now. And Erickson wants an explanation as to why the touchdown was allowed, what the conference was about by the officials in the end zone. A 75-yard pass to a fullback, then a 34-yard interception, then an offensive lineman recovers a fumble in the end zone for a touchdown. A stunning turnaround here in the Orange Bowl. Strange things can happen in this stadium. Again, the option coming down. He wanted a pitch. It's not there. He turns it up inside. Not the greatest runner in the world, but effective to get it up there to the goal line area. The ball's out. The ball's rolling toward the end zone, and Sapp scoops it up for a big six. Jack Garut, what'd the quarterback tell you? Well, Brent Damon Ewart came off of the field, and you'd think he had maybe had created a big problem. He was all upset because he fumbled the ball. One of the things that Damon does not wear are wristbands to keep the sweat and the humidity from running down to his hands. As you can see, if we can try and get a shot, he has gone to the trainer now, and he has put those wristbands on his wrist. It's that hot here. Penalty. Well, Chris Tormey's defense, the Husky defense, has played awfully well. They've only given up that one big play. Look for Miami not to try to get it all back in one play. Look for them to go ahead and use everybody. Run the football. They're not that far out of the ball game. 11 points. They can do it. Look at this. The last Miami loss at home, the freshman class here today, was in the third grade. I think they're glad they're here today rather than the third grade. This is a heck of a ball game. Stewart's number 28 there in the huddle. Harris breaks out. Here's Costa. Gotta get Herman. him back into the ball game, Brent. Stewart, left side. Stewart. 
Good run on first down, 11 yards. David Kilpatrick wraps him up. Good key block by a little wide receiver. Five foot nine, 170 pounds, Jonathan Harrison. Sealed the defense off from the outside, and that allowed him to scoop outside there and make a nice game. Good job by Jonathan Harris. That alone is a headline. <laughs> 25 points, the most scored against Miami. And who knows what's going to happen to the streak now. This is a long way from over. Tight man coverage showing here. Oh, they're backing out. See, they're playing games with him. And the whistle. <laughs> they're playing games with him. Good job by Chris Tormey's defensive calling. They know they're audibly on the line of scrimmage. You're giving them the tight, tight look, and then they're backing out. And it forced them into another mistake. You're playing cat and mouse out there. Two coordinators really working and competing against each other. Rich Olsen running the offense for the Hurricanes. Chris Tormey running the defense for the Huskies. First and 15 after the five yards were walked off. They have some nice screens in their game plan that we haven't seen yet, too. And when you screen to a guy like Stewart, the potential is great. Right coming up here. the blitz, coming up the blitz. Here they come. Costa's hip on the release. And it is still caught by Chris T. Jones, who has returned to the lineup for another Hurricane first down. Costa throwing under pressure with Richie Chambers all over him. Under pressure? That's under duress. They bring everybody. They brought seven people. Chambers went right up over the top, got him, and then the other linebacker came over the top and decapitated him. He still got a real good job by Chris Jones, maintaining concentration on the ball. Tough on a defender. He had him covered. Costa might be shook just a little bit, Brent. Boy, he took a hit. First and 10, the ball inside, the Huskies 40. Stewart, slant from the right, eight yards. Good block by Zeb Lamelski and the other offensive guard, Alan Simonet. See, coming off, opening up that crease, knocked him far enough off the ball, the linebacker could not scrape right into the hole. Good job by that offensive line. Keep Stewart in the offense. Use him. These Huskies are battling, though. Jump in the front around. Stewart for the first down. Out of bounds on the far side, inside the 25-yard line. See, he wanted to run up inside. They repeated the play. They came, Rich Olsen, quarterback, coach, coordinator, called the same thing. This they wanted to run up in here, and but with the speed, he just bounced outside. See, he starts in there. He starts in, he stretches, and he gets out again. It's the little receiver, Jonathan Harris, doing a good job blocking. Boy, that's great to see. First and 10 for the Canes. Costa. Gets one on one, incomplete. Out of bounds. Bump and run coverage, uh, good coverage too. He had no place to go but out of bounds. He actually should line up a little closer to the hash mark and give himself a little more room to operate down there. But they're going after Russell Harris to see bump and run. He's playing him inside. He puts a hand on him. That's legal in college football. The ball's just a little too far outside. Good coverage position all the way. Dick, as he goes down, he is still down down there in a the corner. Now, I might have cramped up a little bit. Here's the young man. He's getting his first opportunity to really play, Brent, you know, because he came in here with a hamstring problem, so he's probably not in the best condition. Boy, I can see why the coaching staff says he's going to be the best. And here's what we've got tomorrow, starting at 7 Eastern, America's Funniest Home Videos. Followed by on our own, Lois and Clark and Total Recall.
Arnold Schwarzenegger is coming to a TV screen near you. There is the young man from North Florida, Lake City. So you know the Seminoles of Florida State were hard after him, too. He elected to come down here to Miami. And the Canes are grateful that he did. Could become one of their all-time best. Second and ten. Well, it looks like the Canes have got that running game saddled up a little bit here with uh, Stewart. You know, in that first drive, remember when, when it was stopped by Laura Malloy in the end zone, they ran the ball. They're so used to being successful passing that they forget they've got, a, you know, a 10, 400 meter guy to carry the football. They lined Derek Harris up at a tight end on that right side. Here Coming comes after the blitz. Him up inside. And Stewart. Almost French fried that blitz. See, when you blitz like that, they were taking the B gaps that outside, and if you can pop that inside, you're to the safety. Okay, the Huskies play defense with great confidence. They're, they don't care. This is their philosophy. They get after you. Well, they're coming now, leading 25 to 14. Looking at a third and seven. That was Devers making that play for them. They're already in field goal range. Don't take a sack. Don't turn it over. Go ahead and execute what's called. German and Harris. Trent Jones, the motion man. Costa. Incomplete. And that was defended by Ink Aliaga, number 54. He was on Derek Harris. You know, when they use a man in motion, it can also be a key for the quarterback. They went man in motion, little juke motion there, in and back out. But that told the quarterback they were not in man-to-man. -man. He knew what he was attacking. It was a zone. See, the man in motion here, no defender chasing him. So he knows they're working against a zone in there. If somebody's running with him tight, then he knows it. Just good defense. Now it's Pruitt. He had a 19-yarder and a 38-yarder. High snap. 38-yarder on its way. He's good. Three field goals for him. Let's go to New York. John Saunders sounds like the Wolverines have suddenly got it in high gear, partner. Absolutely, Brent. One reason. Look who's back in the backfield. Tyrone Wheatley. Five yards in this touchdown run, 41st of his career. That's an all-time record at Michigan. Two-point conversion and a field goal, 20 to 14. Brent. So it's a six-point margin for the Wolverines in that showdown in Ann Arbor. And here, Jim Lambright and the Washington Huskies, a 15-point underdog, lead it 25 to 17 after Pruitt kicks his third field goal of the day for the Canes. And what Coach Lambright is saying, way to go, way to go. Didn't give up the seven that time. Held him to three, and now they'll get the ball back. This Husky football team is much better. No, we, we were had the opportunity to do the Ohio State game, Brent, and they played so well. The week before against USC, they turned it over five times and just played poorly. But they were a much better football team than USC. They really were. They just didn't win the game, and they played poorly. Give the credit to SC. But this is more of what I think they're capable of being. kind you like to return if you can feel it it, it gets there quickly Kaufman batted it down picked it up at the four Kaufman is stopped short of the 15 by Antonio Coley and there's a penalty flag down see these linebackers Brent were all running backs and that kind of stuff in, uh, in high school and they run a Coley he gets down there as fast as anybody else he's a backup outside linebacker he can fly hold it That's the time to be making mistakes, huh, Coach? Not at all. You can expect Miami here defensively. Greg McCracken, put some pressure on him. Try to create the turnover. Go in there, create the minus yardage play on first down. First down. 
So the ball put back in the seven yard line. This is the noisy end of the Orange Bowl. Dick Vermeil remembers this end yeah, as well bet. as anybody in the country. Kaufman breaks free. Kaufman to the fumble. Miami. He's down. He's Kaufman down. went back at it and said he's down. They have whistled it down. Washington retains possession. They say he was down. That shows how he can make you miss. Get through the little tiny cracks from up here. It didn't look like there was going to be anything there. He takes it, rolls here, and then boom, skirts right in that hole. Good offensive line block, and now they're going to step it around. Kesey 54 steps around. Actually, he doesn't even block the linebacker. Runs into his own man. <laughs> when you can run, you can run. They said now, he was take down. Take another look, and uh, this will give you a much better view, and I think you can see that he probably was down with the knee. Let's just take a he good look at this. Up. Watch. He yeah. was down. He was down. Really close. Yeah, a little bit closer than I thought. As a matter of fact, now that I watch that. That's Earl Little that's banged up there. Redshirt sophomore out of North Miami High School. You know, Malcolm Pearson was hurt earlier, the other safety. Here's another take look one at One more look at this knee. Does that knee get down before the ball comes out? Yeah, he's down. Yep, he's down. Good call. Leon Neal replaces him as running back, and Hewitt. First down complete to the tight end Conwell and out of bounds here on the near side. We wonder if, you know, we haven't mentioned Warren Sapp's name much lately, Brent, and they're working on him pretty good over there. You know, he's extended great energy in that first quarter, but they're trying to get two people on him, guard and center, when they can. See, the guard's going to set him on here, and the center's going to work, and the guard's coming down here. They're not taking him all the time on by himself there. They're working him. See, they got the tackle, actually. It came down and helped him. He's drawing a crowd over there, and that tires you out when you fight more than one guy. I think Husky Stadium will be rocking next Saturday when Washington comes back home. And Guess the Bruins is not. That's one of the games that ABC will be covering next Saturday afternoon. Bruins a little beaten up right now. That Husky Stadium rocks regardless who's in that stadium. <laughs> that, is, that is true. <laughs> There's the lineup. 3.30 Eastern time. Want to watch a couple of the games? Call your cable operator. See if you got a little pay-per-view in your area. Big score. Big, big drive going. Eating up the clock as well. Eating up the clock. Brilliant use of his tight ends here today against this speedy defense. Kaufman has returned. First and 10 for Washington. Coming out from the 38. And here's Kaufman. That was Warren Sapp coming in underneath number, See that? Four, number 76. <laughs> he actually got too much penetration that time when with the, uh, the style of running of, of Napoleon, he got back up underneath him. He says, gosh, when I get that deep, I ought to make the play. The one thing he doesn't do real well yet that he will learn to do is use his hands better and after he has whipped the guy to throw him and get rid of him. Now the one factor, and because they're ahead, might be a little bit easier to play through, and that's the heat and humidity of South Florida. When you're leading 25-17, you don't tend to notice the conditions quite like you might if you were behind. And Heward steps up into number 50's arms, and Baraka Short brings him down. John Saunders, give me an update on Air McNair, man. Well, Brent, his team is having a tough day, but for Steve McNair, business as usual, 27 of 42, 328 yards and a couple of touchdowns, and just a moment ago, he runs this one in from 10 yards out, eight carries for 20 yards as well, but his team beaten up by Sam Houston right now, 42-23. Michigan, Todd Collins has just gone 65 yards to Amani Toomer. They missed the two-point conversion, 26-14. Brent. Michigan suddenly making it look easy here in the second half against Colorado. 
And here it's Huard finding Bruner. What a brilliant use of two tight ends here this afternoon by the Huskies. And he got exactly the coverage he wanted, a loose, too deep zone. That allowed the tight end to cross, find the, the zone there, and go ahead. You'll see the tight end release. You'll see the two deep safeties back here like that. Corners rolled up. The tight end will run across and find a little hole in that zone. Now he's going over. See, no one running with him man-to-man. -man. The one linebacker blew it. He ran with the back out of the backfield. When you play zone, you better not pick up that back. Bruner with five catches for 42 yards. All five catches resulted in first downs for the Huskies. Into Miami territory. Ball at the 46 on the snap. Heward suddenly getting time against this bonded defensive line. Into the arms of number 14, Eric Bjornsson, and that was Scott battling him. Dennis Scott, a redshirt freshman. He's five foot nine going against a six foot five guy. Excellent job. And this is not just any ordinary wide receiver. He was first a quarterback, moved 4.0 student out of high school, honor student at the University of Washington. Here he is. He's thinking about going to med school, but today he's thinking about making a big play. All around outstanding young man. And the Huskies, as the ball came free over there on that far side when he was out of bounds. I've been sort of waiting for that mismatch through this ball game. You know, of the, the big tall guy against the little short guy. Now, one of the major themes that's unfolding is that this offensive line of Washington is suddenly maturing. Not that time. Oh. No daylight. As soon as I say that, Marley and his buddies come busting across. Warren Sapp coming in underneath. Let's take a look at that big play into the hands of Bjornsson, and let's see what happens here when he was trying to get the handle on the ball. Look at him just leap up there and see Scott Young, inexperienced, didn't jump when he jumped. He's got the ball right now. Look at right here. He's actually got the football. Boy, <laughs> I don't know if he had control of it, but he had it for a second. Look at he's saying, hey, I took that away. Second and 13. Kaufman. Hoffman to the 11-yard line, and see, Carlos Jones. See, they made a mistake that time, Brent. They brought Marley on the outside, and the defensive men didn't come down inside that gap. You'll see what I'm talking about right here. When you bring an outside linebacker, see, they bring the outside linebacker right here, but the defensive end doesn't fill that inside gap. He should pinch and go underneath. Look at they find it, but he does it. But <laughs> give the credit to the running back. He's just, he could see that daylight. I excuse you, defensive lineman. I was wrong. You did it right. Even a field goal would be huge for the Huskies in this situation. It would force Miami into a two-score situation to catch up. It's 25-17 right now. This is third and 10. They're kicked over to the strong side of the field. He's got one-on-one -on -one back there to the left. Now it is fourth and ten in field goal time for Washington. He did a good job of not taking the sack. But he saw where he wanted to go, but the defense, the pressure got to him. Good read by Heward. Big, big drive. They started that down there inside that five-yard line. Ate up a lot of time. The tight ends have become magnificent here. And then Bjornsson catches one. And in what was a little bit of a controversy over there, Scott may or may not have had possession, went Washington's way, and now they'll try to make the most of it. Wales is two for two of the season from this distance. This is a 29-yarder. That snap. Bjornsson's hands get it back down, and they make it. Credit Bjornsson, the holder. He reached back and was able to get it there, the former quarterback who caught that ball on the far side moments ago. Brett, too, it was a low kick. No inside pressure, no hands up. That block, that ball should have been blocked. It was a low kick, very low seat. Bad snap, way over there. Bjornsson does a great job of getting it put back down, but it's a very low kick. You've got to have somebody inside there getting their hands up, especially with the size of some of those defensive linemen. Should have blocked that. 28-17 at the 219 mark. Could it be here this afternoon? A 58-game home winning streak, an NCAA record on the line. The first time that these two schools have ever played football against each other. Dennis Erickson with a lot of ties out in the state of Washington. One-time head coach at Washington State before coming down here to Miami. 
dramatic turn of events at the start of the second half here and things have not been quite the same since. You know you have to give Jim Lambright and his staff a lot of credit because you and I both mentioned this yesterday after our meetings with their coaching staff. They really came here with confidence and I think Jim does a great job of coaching positively making his kids believe they can win. He says we too we have a tradition. We go out, we play football. We're a better football team right now than we were two weeks ago. We will prove it. And they sure did in this quarter, Dick. 25 third quarter points for the Huskies. Short kickoff fielded at the 19 by Shipman. Shipman darts back. And he is brought down by Rashawn. 12 to go, and Costa runs on into the middle of things right now needing to pull one out from behind they have a lot of things in their offense they have not used as yet so I mean they, they aren't short of weapons ball at the 29 the shotgun five wide receivers and no running backs out Wide open is German. 13 yards in a first down. This is the one thing the defensive people, Chris Tormey said, the thing that worries me the most is the five wide receiver formation. That really stretches you. And it's really tough to play it man to man. It pretty much dictates the zone unless you want to take a chance. Here's the shotgun, big advantage back there. He can see the rush, he can see the defense. Those five wide receivers defend it for him. Look at him getting stepped on right there. Rubbing his leg a little bit. Oh, that hurt a little bit. And again, that look striking uh, the defense, and the whistle blows. Alan Simonette moved early. Big, strong, aggressive guy. I was very impressed in watching him play on the Arizona State game tapes. Offensive lineman that plays with a defensive lineman disposition. He likes to hit you. Playing today, he's been through two major auto accidents and survived them both and playing football today. Someone's protecting him. doesn't feel as warm as you might expect for the Huskies. They are playing their way right through and Sneak. now Costa moves up and sneaks for it right behind center when he took a look at the defense and they alerted us to that that he would do that. He and the center were the only ones to do what was going to happen. John the Wolverines still on fire or the buffs coming back now. No Brent the Wolverines are still rolling Todd Collins here hooking up with a money tumor 65 yards he cuts in behind the secondary and then no one's going to catch him they went for the two point conversion did not get it 26 14 Wolverines Brent. Oh Washington fans can relate to a Michigan explosion. A couple of Rose Bowls ago it was Tyrone Wheatley and the Wolverines. Costa complete this is German again German. Hurt. Cutback is hit hard, lucky to hold on to the football. Wow. Iwaliko, Mike Iwaliko, number 88. He was coming like a runaway Mack truck. And that's the result of that collision as they rush out to German. Remember, Iwaliko is the defensive lineman that was rushing the passer. Now you have German coming in here on an underneath the zone pattern. Now he, he will come off pass rushing and make that hit. There's a kid that loves to play football. Rush the passer, force the throw, chase the receiver, make the hit. They have a fine medical staff led by Todd Torricelli, the head trainer, Joel Beam, Mark Shemansky. These people know what they're doing.
take one more look. Coming from the left side of your screen, really struck him right up underneath the chin there with that helmet. Syracuse improving. Well, I think that's a very positive sign when I see that they have taken the helmet off the young man down there. We'll, we'll take a little bit of a break, but I'm always glad when that training staff. back and ready to play and uh, some positive news to report right away about Jamie German. This is German. After we broke away he was able to get up and to an ovation trotted off to the side and now Costa out of the shotgun deep out of bounds. See they Tony five Gator. Five wide receivers, they sent them all deep, get the zone stretched across there, went to the widest guy to his right. Look for him to get down underneath in between those people with the with that seam pattern here, Brent. Jamie German has trotted back and is gonna line up at wide receiver. <laughs> is he tough? He is out to the right. Costa in the shotgun. The young man has Take an account, saved by the bell. He's come back and look at here. And Lawyer Malloy in on that play defensively. Isn't that a nice sight? That time they decided to come with a five man rush. They took the inside linebacker, Inca Liga, number 54, put him up outside and brought him, and they picked him up. The guard did a good job of seat number 63, get out there and cut him down. That was a nice job. It's going to end the third quarter. This is some situation and storyline. 58 straight game winning streak. And it's in jeopardy here. The Huskies lead the Canes. And we'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The Orange Bowl in Miami with Jack Aroot and Dick Vermeil. I'm Brent Musburger. 58 straight games. The Hurricanes of Miami have won, and they have won in convincing fashion. Until the day the most points they've given up, 23. But hold on to that final tombstone down there. Number 59 might not be so coming easy after to put him. up. There Costa it is. Batted away, and that will make it fourth down on a third and four. It was David Kilpatrick coming. Good change up. See, they loaded up, went man to man. You saw it coming. It didn't show it real early, but it'll come from the right side of your screen. Kilpatrick moved from the outside, moved the inside. All offensive linemen tied up, couldn't get him picked up, or any offensive line slide call. He bats it down, plays volleyball with it. Not in this decade has a team from out of state come to Florida and beaten Miami Florida State or Florida a most remarkable statistic and everything very much in doubt now the Huskies are playing the game of their lives here this afternoon and that one is complete to Marcus Wimberley and a first down very good poise by Costa he looked it over there saw what he was going to get through the first down thing that's all they were going for not thinking of anything else but 
they were all covered up out there. See, it looked like it was going to be tight man. You see him on the top of your screen, see him on the bottom. It looks a little tighter. They back out. He recognizes it, fires a strike. Nice job by Costa. The coaching staff already knows they need a touchdown on a two to close to within three. They need to keep this drive going. The Huskies determined to stop them right here at the 35. Any first and ten, here they come again. He snaps it off into the hands of German. German out of bounds, close to the 20-yard line. Costa showing real good poise, total understanding of what's going on out there defensively. Good coaching by Rich Olson, the quarterback coach. The young man knows what he's doing. Five wide receivers. Look how they stretch that defense. I'm surprised. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen, all the way across the field. German, German slips the tackle. German inside the 10-yard line. And Tony Parrish. Take a hit like that, and he is leading the Canes back. Yeah, take a look at the change of time of possession going, having gone through that third quarter. Washington has moved back out there. Almost, yeah, four minutes up on it. Offense is pretty much balanced all the way. Huskies are lucky they're plus one. You'd always like to be plus one on turnovers. This game is testing the character of both these fine teams. They got to throw the ball to the slot against this kind of coverage, Brent. You really do. Costa's looking in that direction. And a misread. The receiver, number 85, Chris T. Jones, broke it off to the inside with his read, and Costa was throwing to the corner. Wimberly was trying to get out there. The slot man was trying to get to the corner, but Lamar Lyons, 25. He was physical with him. He wouldn't let him get there. He just jammed him. Greg Smith, the offensive line coach. Dennis Erickson, the head coach. Greg Smith does a real nice job coaching these Miami offensive linemen. I was very impressed in watching them practice the other day. One minute gone from the clock in the fourth quarter. They're coming. Incomplete, wanted German on that slant on second and goal. Boy, they'll take it. They go ahead and brought six people that time, covered the five man to man. They can account for everybody as long as you play it man. I would not be surprising if there'd be some cramping up by some of these fellows here in the heat and humidity in the fourth quarter. You'll see some of them like Russell Harrison of Washington, Jamie German of Miami, going to get up a little bit slow. German, of course, already took that jarring hit in case you weren't with us a short time ago. Russell Harrison, the corner, getting up real slow. Boy, I tell you, when you play tight man-to-man -man coverage, which you're almost forced to down here, they'll change up with the zone, yes. But when you get a corner hurt down there, that really influences your game plan and what you can call if you've got to come in there with a backup. Fortunately, Harrison can stay in. Tough guy. Third and goal from the eight-yard line for Miami. They're all the way over up toward the slot, ladies and gentlemen. See if they got four on three up there. They've got to come down here to the bottom of the screen. Here they are. Costa. Too Nil long. High, incomplete. Fourth down from the eight-yard line. Frank just waited too long. See, they were all the way up there. They went zone. You'll see what I'm talking about. They were loaded up to the wide side of the field. See here, they got four people here playing on three. He wanted to come back here to the underneath pattern. He just threw it poorly and waited too long. See, they drop off zone. Pop it to him right now. Too long, too long. Pruitt trots onto the field. Some of the faithful not happy about this, but this would put them in an eight-point situation. A 25-yarder. He's kicked 19 and 238s. This one real high, wasn't it? And it's his fourth. So Pruitt with four field goals on the day. And the lead is eight. More importantly for Washington, 13.46 to go. And here in the Orange Bowl, over the next 45 minutes or how long it takes, he'll be the man who will be out there in the cauldron. That great quarterback tradition, and now it's up to Frank Costa to see what he can do with this winning streak. The Washington Huskies, meanwhile, will attempt to mount a ball control drive. 
Bring it on down the field. Take some time off that clock. They're up by eight right now with 13.46 to go, and Lambright's troops are getting ready. And out of bounds. So the offense will take the ball out of the 35-yard line with the first and 10. You know, Brent, the last time the Huskies had the ball, they did a good job of zone blocking, step blocking with the guard and tackle, and handling, handing the ball off to Napoleon. I wouldn't be surprised they start out that way again. Try to eat up some more clock time. They've got the eight-point lead. You don't want to sit on it, but they ran the ball well last time on that long drive coming out. Through the years that this streak has been alive, it has always been Miami that buried you with the big play. Here this afternoon in the Orange Bowl, it has been the Huskies who have turned in one big play after another. Now a critical drive. Kaufman. A couple of yards and no more with Marley and Holmes there. Marley just loves to play football. When you talk with him, he can't help but smile and, you know, get so excited just talking the game. Kaufman with 21 carries and 60 yards. You know, I got a kick out of talking to all the defensive coaches. I said, are you guys really pointing for Kaufman? Oh, no way. We just got a regular game plan and all that kind of stuff. You talk to every player. No way is he going to win the Heisman running against us. <laughs> well, Coach, what do you think Monday night? 9 o'clock, the troubled Denver Broncos come a-calling on Jim Kelly and the Buffalo Bills. What do you I, think about that? I think that the Buffalo better be careful. I'll tell you, the worst thing from a pro coaching standpoint is for a team to play poorly a couple games in a row, and your team keeps looking at that, and you're trying to tell them, hey, Elway and those guys can come here and beat you, and they don't believe you. And all of a sudden, they come up with a good football game. They have pride. Watch out. I know you don't agree with me. I know you're shaking your head there. But I tell you, I've been caught in that trap. Not very often you weren't. Yeah, yeah. Believe you, me, I you, was. You haven't been watching that Bronco defense like I have. No, I, you know, you got all those different channels. I don't have all those channels. <laughs> so Kenny Holmes trots off over to the sideline. He's going to be a good one. Red shirt sophomore. You know what they do? They take defensive ends. They make defensive ends on outside linebackers as they outgrow the position. Then when the defensive ends outgrow that position, they move them into tackle. Clock is running. 13-20. This is a second and eight. Fake to Kaufman. Ewer scrambles to the right. Out of bounds on the far side. And it looks like Short is down on that far sideline. Remember, Baraka missed part of the season. He's up and around. He had operation on his leg there, but he's okay right now. John Saunders, how about Arizona and Stanford? Well, Brent, Steve Stenstrom came into this game against Arizona without throwing an interception this year. He's thrown two in this game. This one picked off by Tony Bowie. And watch the run. Should have been tackled there. Another miss, a third miss, a good block. And then he picks up one more block right there. Gets him to the end zone for the touchdown. 34-10, Arizona has the lead. Brent. And here it is a huge play on third and five for Heward and the Huskies, and they snap it off to number 14, Eric Bjornsson. I'm surprised they played so loose on the third and five situation. And, you know, a guy like Heward has a strong enough arm to throw it to that outside guy in the slot. Carlos Wilson's got to get up. See, he's back off here. And he backed out of there, and he just went, boom, caught the first down play. you got to crowd him a little bit more. See, he's running out of there. Bjornsson settled down there, good strong arm, got it there in time. The headline in Washington could read tomorrow and still unbeaten in the Orange Bowl. Remember, the Huskies came in here and in the Orange Bowl knocked off Oklahoma under Don James. This is the second time they have played down here. They lead it 28-20. Now 12-30 to go and a fresh set of downs. Kaufman outside right. Kaufman across midfield into the 48. 
Boy, what a pain in the neck the defense him. I know Greg McCracken, McCracken the, the defensive coordinator, was concerned about, yes, we stopped the point of attack, we shut him down, but you just never know where he's going to end up, a la Barry Sanders. Now watch number eight, middle of your screen, attack the line of scrimmage. He attacks right up inside. He's coming straight ahead. Look, boom, all of a sudden, he's back outside. They come and get a little blocked right there, and he moves the ball. Now, not a big gain, but I'll tell you, second and four, you're ahead of the down and distance situation. 66 yards for Kaufman, closing in on the all-time rushing record. Fred Coleman, number 22, checks into the game, slotted to the right. Kaufman picking his way for no more than a yard and Kenny Holmes is there and it'll be another third down now in this situation Heward has been very effective especially with his tight ends Mark Bruner has been the big third down receiver here 11 23 mark an eight point lead for the Huskies he's a fine fine player as you've been emphasizing all day long 64 career catches coming into this ball game that's a lot of catches for a tight end ranked number four in the history of husky tight end Heward, after a rocky start has just been gaining confidence he's eight of 11 Pressure. on third downs it's picked up heward has got it again he's got another completion this one to dave janoski on a big third down play for the huskies offensive lineman did an awfully nice job of picking up the inside rush that they blitzed people inside tried to load him up you'll see him come up in here and try to get there he has the one-on-one -on -one situation right there but they pick him up see both linebackers crowd they pick him up they pick up the other guy he flips it out there one-on-one -on -one. perfect job good execution by everybody Miami not familiar with this situation at the 1040 mark. I can remember Arizona playing a whale of a game down here and then losing a tight, low scoring field goal battle. First and 10 for the Huskies are up eight. And it's Neal. Neal crosses the 40. Chad Wilson brings him down at about the 37 yard line. Good first down run by Leon Neal, the junior tailback. Very, very, very important. But you just said, Brent, good first down run. When you can run the ball and come up with six yards, end up in that second and four, you're controlling the ball game. You're eating up the clock. We're down to 10 minutes to go right now. Miami wants the ball back. They're going to have to start taking more chances. You'll come after them and blitz them. Second down and five. And took a little bit of time for them to get the play signaled into Heward. I would dare say the coach is discussing their options here on second and five at the 940 mark well they put Napoleon Kaufman back in there they might be thinking about running the ball again straight ahead with the big play fullback of earlier and this will leave them in third and short I believe let's see where they spot the ball Trevor Highfield number 79 offensive guard Frank Garcia 65 Peter Kessie Really, Patrick Kessie, rather, really coming off the ball that time. Just nothing fancy. Just go out and nail him. Look at one, two, three, just coming out and nailing, moving the line of scrimmage back, back, on quality back. people. Quality people. That doesn't look like much, but third and two isn't too bad a situation. They could run it twice, get a first down, attempt a long field goal. A long field goal would make it very tough if successful. Inside of nine minutes left in the Orange Bowl. An eight-point Washington lead, and Heward calls He's the play at the line. The pitch to Kaufman. Kaufman for the first down. Extra, extra, extra effort. The normal back, the very good back, the excellent back may not make the first down. The great back makes the first down. Here you don't coach this. He gets it pitched to him in the option. He knows what he's got to do. He makes one match. He makes another man miss. He puts his pads down. Up there he goes for the first down. Great effort by a little back that plays like a big man. Clock running down to eight and a half minutes. Greg McCracken right there. McMacken, rather, I'm pronouncing that correctly. The Huskies have been magnificent on big third downs here. And Kaufman oh. is slammed by Richardson. They collide head on at the 25-yard line, and Richardson is pushed back. Brett, what's happened is the Husky offensive line has worn down the defensive line. They're coming off the ball now and controlling people they could not control in the first half. 
Good contact made on that one. And we will listen to that. Woo, hear that up here. Leon Neal in, Kaufman out. Second and four. The clock down towards seven and a half minutes. Thomas. Oh, good linebacking play. Lewis and Russell. Very good play by Lewis. Boy, he read that. He took on on right now. Go meet the fullback in the hole. No fooling around with that guy. You hesitate. Here he is right now. He's going boom right in there and meet the play. Watch him go right up in there after. Both guys got to him. Tuan Russell as well. Better fake that. Come on off and run your option now because you're drawing a crowd at the point of attack. Russell's shaken up. He's so. the backup linebacker too, Brent. Their starter at that position, Corwin Francis, is already injured. If he can't play, they'll be to the third guy. We'll take a break. 7.15 to go. 7.15 to play, and one of the gaudiest win streaks in the history of college football is in jeopardy. 7.15 to go, and Washington with an opportunity to stop Miami's 58-game home winning streak. This could be the play. Third and four. They are three for three on third downs on this drive. They have been brilliant. Heward slips, regains his balance. Incomplete, a penalty flag down. Earl Little covering on the play. There is a flag down. Hold on. Great play by Earl Little, Brent. Offensive lineman pulling on that one, stepped on the quarterback as he reverse pivoted. Flag was dropped inadvertently. There's no flag. So Earl Little's great play in the defensive backfield stands, and now a huge field goal attempt. Well, remember, this is an eight-point lead at the 6.52 mark. This is a 42-yarder now for Wales. He's made a 47-yarder and a 29-yarder. He's one for four on the year from this distance. He's got it. And it's still a low kick. John Wales with his second 40-yarder of the day, and now the upset could be at hand. It is an 11-point lead at the 6.48 mark. The hands of the holder, Eric Bjornsson, puts it down beautifully. John Wales kicks through his third field goal of the day. Second 40-plus yarder for Jim Lambright and the Huskies, who watch from the sideline. Lambright with an 11-point lead, and this would be a huge upset. It is already a 26-point swing. The Huskies came in here a 15-point underdog, and they have been knocking the Canes back on their heels. Four defensive players were helped off on that last series. And this kickoff is hammered out of the end zone. The Huskies smell it now. 6.48 to go and up 11. And next week, get on out there to Husky Stadium. This could be one of the biggest victory celebrations up there in mighty Seattle. Boy, do I wish we were going to watch the Bruins and the Huskies up there in Seattle next week. What a showdown. If you're in some other part, tune that one into pay-per-view, man. That's going to be some ball game up there. Live, 3.30 Eastern time, 12.30. Start the boats on Lake Washington. Just get on over there and start partying right now. What a scene that's going to be. First and 10 now for the Canes. 6.48 to go. We've got an 11-point a monumental upset in the brewing down here in South Florida in the heat and humidity. And they're still coming after him. They're coming after him. Costa shakes free. Costa runs for the first down to the 35-yard line. The ball was down before he coughed it up. A 15-yard run for the quarterback. That shows you how much confidence they have in their defense, their plan, their scheme. To be bringing an outside linebackers, they bring both guys off the corner right in here. Excuse, the telestrator didn't work properly. See, they're rushing. That forces tighter man coverage. You're taking some chances against good receivers. They don't care. This is the way they play. They're taking it to them. A 
Costa will drop to German on that screen, and it was defended beautifully. Number 46, Jason Shorick, cleans up the freshman defensive end, and it's a loss of a yard. And the Canes ever so slowly are getting up now. It has been some physical punishment handed out here by the Huskies. The Pac-10 has been put down all across the country. This would be so huge for their conference. They have lost big games. They have lost the big underdogs. But they have come to South Florida. They have put their reputation on the line, and they lead it by 11. 5.45, and who would have thought this? Costa bounces one. It's third down and 11. There was a real change-up defense that time, Brent. They rushed like three people and dropped a defensive tackle out in coverage. Now watch right here. He looks like it's going to be a four-man rush. He drops out. Against USC, he intercepted a ball. Now see, instead of rushing, he drops out. That gives him one extra man in the underneath zone coverage. Very unusual. That was Steve Hoffman getting out of there. He's looking for a second interception. 540. Third and 11. Costa complete at the 49 for the first down to Yatil Green, the talented freshman. That's a 14-yard gain, and the Canes stay alive. Very impressive job by Costa. He had to wait to allow that pattern to develop. Pressure coming. He ignored the pressure. He stepped into it through the strike, and that pattern took almost too much time to develop. The Canes need to pick up the tempo a little bit between plays here. They need to get into the rhythm now. It's 5.20 to go. They've got to have a couple of scores. Five wide receivers. Costa intercepted. Richie Chambers picks it off for the Huskies. Chambers out of bounds at the 26-yard line. the third Miami turnover this half and their fourth turnover of the game against La Jim Lambright's opportunistic defense and the first thing when's the last time we saw Miami Hurricane fans file out early of a game in the Orange Bowl I believe that Hoffman again dropped out in coverage on that Brent and then short got good pressure on him the ball batted around, and when one of these linebackers intercepts it, you know, it's not, not a typical linebacker. That guy's a state hurdle champion in Chambers. He can run. Now five minutes to eat away on the clock. Kaufman, and remember, he still has a rushing record that he can salt away here today. He only needed three yards prior to that snap. I cannot tell you how gutty a performance this is by Washington. Unless you have been here in the humidity and the heat, and you have tried to match up against this hurricane speed. You have no idea There's how that courageous these kids have played down here, and it was Hoffman. It was Hoffman and that change-up defense. Quarterbacks are not used to seeing a defensive lineman drop out. He's going to be mad that he didn't catch the ball. This man's status as a head coach just moves higher and higher with each snap. The record is Hoffman's. And now Kaufman can worry about a little Heisman Trophy action down here as he lead, helps lead this team toward an upset. A lot of heroes in this football game. Richard Thomas, fullback, does a real nice job. Oh, we got a penalty on it. Gosh darn it. Nullify a great effort. And we get word, speaking of the Heisman, that Steve McNair separated his right shoulder late in that game. They're going to lose to Sam Houston State, Al Cornwell, and that's too bad for the young man. He won't play again today, and we certainly hope he's going to be all right in future weeks. You never know. That's almost too too easy for me to say that that Sports Illustrated jinx continues, and in case of an injury, I just don't even think I'll say it. No, don't say it. Holding. The offense, 10-yard penalty.
still second. You know, Kaufman may only weigh 185 pounds, but there's only four minutes to go in this ball game. He doesn't show any fatigue at all. I mean, he looks strong. His heart must weigh all of 175 pounds of that 184. He bench presses two and a half times his body weight. Now, that can really help you if you can play football. And fortunately, that strength, he utilizes it in being a better football player. Some guys can bench press, but they can't play. Jack Aroot. Let's watch this play, and then I'll tell you a little story about Kaufman. They run the option. The backup for Kaufman, Neal. Oh, face mask. And Lewis grabs him by that the face mask. And they're going to walk off a few yards, and Kessie has a reminder for the linebacker not to be grabbing his man like that. Blatant foul. Brent, you were talking about Nipper Kaufman. You know, one of the things he did all summer, believe it or not, is he not only worked out during the day, he worked out at midnight. When we were up there in Seattle, we asked him about it. He says, I like to go out and run when it's quiet. He says, I figure it this way. Everybody else is asleep. It gives me a leg up on the competition. Yeah, and you think your neck doesn't have to be flexible if you're going to play football? Did you see how he grabbed his face mask yeah. and yanked Neal's head around? Kaufman trots back on the field. He's rushed for 77 yards. The clock is down to 347. And the longest home winning streak in the history of NCAA Vision 1A football is going to end here today. And it's like the sun is setting on that headset. And you know, you go back as you take another look at him. Lewis grabbing and then unfortunately didn't quickly let go on it. But I'll tell you, you go back to the start of this game and the Canes make their first mistake on the coin flip. They took a side of the field instead of deferring. And at the second half kickoff, things were never the same. Washington got the ball to start both halves of this football game, and they scored on a 75-yard touchdown pass to Thomas, a two-point conversion. Remember, Washington was trailing 14-3 to at the end of the half. And after that touchdown, things were never the same. Now 3.20 to go, and the Huskies are going to win this ball game. And what a performance. You have to salute this man. Look at that. He can't help but grin. Look at that. Even the mustache can't even hide it. He can't help but grin. What a victory. Kaufman, Reese. See, now they're trying to run the stretch play, get him outside. He sees the defense get stretched. Then he just takes it back up inside. 80 yards for Napoleon Kaufman here today. He's the all-time leading rusher. Top of the hour, 7 o'clock. We're going to take a break. That's what's left in the upset. We'll finish it up in a moment. CFA College Football on ABC Sports has been brought to you by the all-new Chevy Blazer with its exclusive driver control system. Coming soon to your local Chevy dealer. The beer that's colder, bolder, yet smooth as ice. Molson Ice from Canada, the land where ice was born. Domino's Pizza. When it's got to be good and it's got to be now, it's got to be, got to be Domino's. And Payne Weber. We believe our most important investment is an investment in relationships. With Dick Vermeil and Jack Aroot, I'm Brett Musburger. The Orange Bowl in Miami. The longest home game winning streak in college football has come to an end. A 58 game win streak by the Miami Hurricanes because it is the Huskies who are barking here now, leading by 11. Three minutes to go, and they have moved down inside the 10 yard line. Third and goal for Damon Heward, who has been superb in the second half, especially on big plays. On the option, Heward, touchdown! The longest road trip in athletics. And what a joy it'll be to take tonight back to Seattle, all the way from Miami. They have done it. Nobody thought they could come in here and win the game. They opened as a 13-point underdog, went to 15, and they're going to win it outright. They've been handing the ball off inside to the fullback. This time they just faked it to him. He comes down and runs the option. He knows where the goal line is. And he's not known as a great runner. He ran physically that time. Wales with three big field goals adds another extra point.
Let's go to Jack Aru. Well, Brent, you talk about it being the longest road trip. They go from Seattle all the way down here to South Florida. And that is the longest in the contiguous 48 states, but they didn't come without their faithful. A lot of these people, Huskies fans from Seattle, they've come. In fact, a thousand of them came by way of boat and airplane. They flew here on Saturday, last Saturday. They went out cruising with Don James and his wife, Carol. They docked this morning. It's going to be one whale of a flight home tonight. May not even need an airplane, Jack. They might take the boat all the way home. <laughs> sure, why not? Come on, we grab that Panama Canal, man. We go on through there, do a little fishing on the way, then we turn right at Baja and just head north. We get there in time for the kickoff against the Bruins next week. They are stunned, absolutely stunned. But it's still a good football team, and we'll get a lot better. You watch. A moment that neither side will ever forget, but especially the Washington Huskies. They have come to Miami, and they have not just won this game. This has not been a fluke, ladies and gentlemen. They have put a licking on them and just take down that last tombstone and bury it someplace else because this baby's history. 58 in a row and over. But now the Canes can regroup and start another one. Boy, what a nice leg. Now, the last team to win in here was Florida. Now, prior to that, the last loss in the Orange Bowl to an out-of-state opponent was the great Flutie Bowl, 47-45. Oh, how Flutie and Bernie Kosar dueled away on that Thanksgiving Friday afternoon. That one of the great games in college football. Probably was number one until the Fighting Irish and Boston College went out of last year in South Bend. Now, one that football fans will be talking about for a long time, especially in the Northwest. Washington has come to Miami, and they are going to do it. Jones out of bounds. And a reminder again, especially you folks down here in South Florida, you want to see this one, huh? The Buffalo Bills starting to come on. Miami Dolphins believe they can do it. Let me tell you something about Miami. They got a tough game on Sunday up against Minnesota. That defense really looks good, but it'll be Denver Buffalo on ABC Monday night, 9 p.m. Eastern time. The Bronco defense in serious trouble. You sound like you don't think they can play very well. <laughs> I think they'd be in trouble, Coach. <laughs> oh! Costa. That's an incomplete pass. He was bringing the arm forward. Justin, Justin Thomas. Thomas knocked it out. We got yeah. time for a quick update from John Saunders. John? Well, Brian, you have a streak coming to an end. We have a day coming to an end for Steve McNair. Watch as he goes out of bounds. Chris Hall, the late hit, then his teammate falls on top of him, injuring his throwing shoulder. He is out for the day. Still third all time now in total offense. 48-23. Sam Houston stayed with the lead, right? What an unfortunate late hit on the oh, young man, gee. huh? Yeah, that's ridiculous. It sure is. Costa. Nice catch. Complete to Jones. 2.29 to go. 26-21, fourth quarter. 30 seconds left in that one. Colorado closes to within five, and Arizona with a big win over Stanford by 24 today. Washington State jumps ahead of the Bruins, 6 nothing. Beware the Washington State defense. You folks out there in Washington know what I'm talking about. They got a couple of inside linebackers that can play with the best of them. Washington State doesn't get a lot of attention, but they turn out some fine, fine football players. Now, blocked again. That was Justin Thomas. He's been in there twice in a row. See, the offensive line is setting a little too soft for the position the quarterback's setting up. You know, he's thrown out of the foxhole. They got to set much firmer, stop that rush, so it gives him throwing lanes and people he can throw over the top of. This team felt so good about this game. They really did. Coaching staff felt good about it. Obviously, the players felt good about and I, it. And I don't want to make people believe that I thought they were cocky. They no. were that. 
Uh, they just seem to have things in control. It was one of those days, right from the uh, right from the coin flip. Costa incomplete. That was my man Marcus Wimberley down there, the sophomore flanker. I think they have to be shocked with the way the horses, the offensive linemen like Peterson, have come through. Father, there'll be better days. Trevor Highfield, he was a defensive tackle last year, playing guard for the first time. One of the eight married members of the football team. A lot of married guys. That's the most I've ever heard on the college team in recent years. Well, we haven't been to BYU recently, man. <laughs> And it is fourth down. And wasn't that symbolic of how things have gone here for the Canes this afternoon? And uh, here's the all time leading rusher. The history of Washington includes some pretty good running backs. You bet. Joe Steele among them. Hugh McElhaney. My vintage. My era. Outstanding job by the Nipper. 20 carries, 80 yards, his Heisman Trophy hopes are alive, but he will tell you that the most important thing was number 58. Not his rushing number, but come in here and see what they could do about that win streak, the longest in NCAA history. And the minutes cannot go by fast enough for Coach Erickson and his staff. This will be a painful, painful loss for them. The Orange Bowl has emptied out. Washington takes over at the 206 mark. He's a dejected young man, and there is an excited older man. I think Frank has done a good job. At some of the interceptions, the battered ball tipped around there like that. He's frustrated. This young man's frustrated. They're all frustrated. That's part of the game. You learn from some time. You know, you get used to winning, you start taking it for granted. You know, you just think it's automatic. It ain't automatic when you play the Huskies. Can you imagine that the Hurricane defense, the defense we were raving about in the first quarter, gave up only three points at halftime, has given up 35 here. My folks, the most points that they've given up since January 1st of 85 was 39 points to UCLA in a Fiesta Bowl. They hit them with a 35 in the second half. Colorado jumped them. Colorado pulls out a dramatic game. We get word it was the last play of the game. Oh, my God. In they threw a Hail Mary pass in Ann Arbor, I am told, by our producer, Kim Belton. And let me congratulate Kim and Bill Webb and uh, George Hill, who came in here, was our stats man. I know how close he is. He's got a lot of friends out in the Seattle area, folks. He has played it right down the middle. He's given me as many numbers today for the Canes as he has for the Huskies. He's got a big smile on his face. Been a tough week for George and it and, and it's been great that uh, George is here and able able to see this. This is big for him. And I know the Hill family with heavy hearts watching this one but, but we wish him all the best. Jimmy Tubbs spotted this one. Jimmy Tubbs was one of the huge fellows who's here who remembers the Flutie Bowl. He was the spotter that day when Gerard Phelan made that catch. Now, John Saunders, give us the full details, man, of that Colorado victory. Sure. Brent, an unbelievable finish. Cordell Stewart can only throw this one up for grabs at his own 36. He tosses this one just about the distance to the end zone. At above the one, it bounces off a Wolverine defender into the hands of Michael Westbrook with a game-winning touchdown. The Buffaloes trail throughout, but they win it by one. Brent. Oh, John, what an unbelievable, didn't that remind you of Flutie to Phelan? This one tipped, it was just like it. What a day in college football. Here we are now, it is time to give out the genuine Chevrolet Awards, and it is Damon Huard from Puyallup, Puyallup, Washington, his brother with a big win for dad last night in a key high school game. You know Jim Lambright's gonna get the ride. Warren Sapp played it all the way, but it was Lambright and the Huskies. The final seconds tick away. Washington has done it. The longest home winning streak in NCAA history is just that, history.
Jackaroo. I'm Brett Musburger. So long, everybody, from the Orange Bowl.